Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to ESL One Cologne and welcome to the grand final. Okay, we've got our Kappa signs, we've got our white signs, we've got our Nip signs, we've got our Fanatic signs. I just need to make sure that you guys have some throat left. So, can I hear you for Counter-Strike Global Offensive? Yeah, okay. All right, that's good. You're gonna need those lungs, trust me, because this is gonna be a cracking final. Today I learned that actually, Swedes are like Koreans in StarCraft. You just can't keep them down, they win absolutely everything. It is an all-Swedish final, it's Fnatic versus UnIP. And before we get the teams out and we start this grand final, it's time to check in with a couple of players who've had some magical moments. First of all, let's check in with Olaf Meister. The bomb defuse has to happen, Flusher gets it, in they go! Fnatic are going into the final, can you believe it? What play from Fnatic! I, I think everyone is just totally focused on the grand, grand prize. It's amazing. You want to you wanna play these finals, it's amazing. Our team is really strong because we have five players that can make huge uh, plays every round. So we are, we are always uh, trusting the, in our team that we can always win the round, no matter what uh, situation we are in. It was a really big challenge to get to the grand final because every good team was here and it's awesome to be in the final. The reason Flat will win this tournament is because we have five really good players and we can beat any team, any time, anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fnatic! And as a Ninjas in Pajamas fan, there's only one man you need when you need to get things done, when you need to get them right. It's Kev right. This is Freiburg disciplined to the end, waiting for something to hit, and it'll be existing. Get right at Freiburg, and they're only one frag away from the final. It's Kaylee versus NIP. Can he deliver? No! Ninjas in pajamas charge into the grand final of the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Challenge here at the ESL One in Cologne. Phenomenal play from NIP. Coming back from one map down, they have rallied and they have launched themselves into the grand final. How intense is this tournament is unbelievable. I've never played like so many close games in my like whole career and I've been playing for like 15 years. And somehow it's always been uh, ending up in cobblestone for us and we're always make it somehow in the end, and I'm just super happy. The crowd here is in Cologne on the Köln Messe. It's just amazing to just see like a beautiful Counter Strike is played, and the top teams playing against each other, and they're cheering on for you. And it feels like they're cheering more for us, but it doesn't matter in the end because everyone is here for playing, and everyone should be cheered on. We should win this tournament mostly because we have brought so many exciting games in this tournament and the people are cheering on for us. We have a massive support from the, the whole world and uh, we just want to resume, like, give them the, the payback and just give them the win, especially for the NIP fans that have been cheering us for us since three years. They're so amazing and they never, never stop supporting us. We just want to bring the goal to them and show, show them what they have been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ninjas in Pajamas! So, here we go. Hold on to your seats at home. Hold on to your seats in the crowd. It's almost time for the grand final. It's Ninjas in Pajamas versus Fnatic. And we have our analysis team back once more, led by Sir Scoots. Thank you very much, Red Eye. You know, I, I got to start off with, you know, story time with Scoots, right? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the old man of esports. The first version of this game dropped in 1999, right? And we were the eSport for many years. We set legendary matchups. We set the business side of eSports on fire. Like, we helped grow what everyone else is enjoying now, right? And then our game kind of went away. <laughs> and literally, I don't think any of us thought in our wildest dreams four years ago, five years ago, that really we would be doing this again. Not for the first time like DreamHack, not for the second time like in Poland, but we're at our third major. On top of all that, we have two historic brands in the building, Nip versus Fnatic. And much like sports rivalries, Fnatic beat them in the very first one. Nip's been second place in every one. 
Is this the one they take home? Uh, well, I don't, before I even attempt to answer that question, and I'm like you, man, I'm so pumped oh, I'm up. so hyped, dude. I've had the D-tie. The hype the is tie real. Is off. The hype is real. I'll, I'll learn to tie one for next event. But uh, honestly, like you say, I, I'll tell you 10 people I didn't ever think there would be anything this big going on, and that's the guys on stage, yeah. because they've played away for years. They're made up of veterans, and this is just absolutely huge. Record numbers of people watching, a record crowd. I've never seen anything like the atmosphere in there. And like you say, two historic brands that have been in the game for so long, and this is it, this is the big time. So it's just absolutely amazing, and it's gonna be too close to call, I, I literally. It's just gonna, who's martial their emotions better in this like tense situation? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, like you guys said, these, these exact teams met in the first major in the finals. Fnatic ended up taking that one home. Nip is obviously really thirsty for blood when it, comes back <laughs> to, when it comes to that Swede revenge. So a lot is on the line, not only just national pride because they're both Swedish teams, but also just to win your first major for NIP. So, I mean. Uh, yeah, absolutely, look, yeah. I mean, I don't think revenge uh, is, is the right word in a way, because this is almost like, right, are, are Nip gonna realize their destiny? This is what we're talking about. They've been the number one team. Uh, everybody knows that. Their trophy cabinet is absolutely stacked, yeah. but it doesn't have a major in it. And that is a travesty in a lot of ways. Exactly. Uh, everybody thought when the first major came along, it was gonna be theirs. Yeah. It didn't happen for them, and even Nip were confused. I mean, they went away and they were like, how have we not won a major? How, how have we, just kind of been second best when we know we're the best. Yeah, yeah. And, and Fnatic were the people that upset that. And they never lived up to that hype after that. Yeah. So Fnatic need to show they weren't just a flash in the pan, and Nip need to show that they truly are the greatest. There's so much going on here. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy because when, when that first matchup happened at DreamHack Winner between NIP and Fnatic, NIP were the heavy favorites. Not, not a single person I talked to at the whole venue had Fnatic winning that championship that day. So it was really upsetting to not only NIP, but everyone else. I think, is this a veto? Is this, is not, not quite yet. Okay. So let me, get, let me do a little role reversal. You're on that stage, Sean. You're replacing either of those, any of those 10 guys. How do you, like, two, two sides of it. Fnatic has been able to sit, kind of rest up after their first match today, watch what just happened. So if you were them, how are you kind of recycling yourself back up? And if you're a Nip guy, how are you, like, bringing yourself back down? Well, I think if you're a fanatic, you're really trying to absorb everything you just saw. You're trying to really remember everything you saw Nip do, the positions they play. You're trying to remember kind of their preferences on certain maps and things like that. If you're NIP, on the other hand, you want to keep that momentum. You want to keep playing with aggression. You don't want to let up and really kind of turtle in a shell. So I really think NIP is kind of in a, a favorative position here heading into the final because CSGO does favor teams that play with confidence and and NIP definitely is going to be rolling with confidence here. I mean, I, I want to say as well, uh, confidence, but nervous energy, right? Yeah. Nervous energy because y you know yourself as a competitor and I, you know, I've competed uh, uh, in sports. That adrenaline is pumping through your system yeah. right now. This is it. This is the moment that all your preparation, yeah. all of the tournament has been about right here and right now. And in a way, it's a great leveler because it's gonna be about who can marshal those feelings internally, who's gonna keep their head in the clutch moments. Yeah. And Nip have more experience technically, but that's not gonna matter because I think their head maybe uh, is gonna be like, well, this is it for us. You know, yeah. this is, again, that destiny moment. It kind of levels out both teams, makes exactly. it even playing field. And you can tell how bad NIP wants it because I've never seen Get Right be so excited on a match that didn't win a tournament than yep. he was just now when they beat LDLC. He got out of his chair, jumped on PETA, he was thrilled. And uh, to see Get Right like that, you just know he wants this really, really bad. Yeah, yeah so. and you know, we have a saying, you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride, right? And that's, that's yeah. legendarily what they've been in these majors. Yeah. And again, they have been in a slump. There's no doubt about it. There's a question of, are they really the number one team right now based on the last couple months of, yeah. uh, you know, of, of play, Gfinity, et cetera. So like, like, I think Fnatic's like has probably has way less pressure. A, they already got a major under their belt, and B, you know they they've actually had a better tournament. They've dropped one map to Navi. That's it. Um, so again, it's a battle of the Swedes. You know, the, the proverbial home of amazing Counter Strike is Sweden, right? You but cannot deny that. While we're talking about emotions, let's bring pride to the table. Um, Pronax. Uh, is you know it got a real potential here to make history. Uh, you know, and I know you want to tell us why. Yeah. So going into this this final, I realized that Pronax has now taken two.
pretty much brand new squads that he formed to the finals of a major. The first one he won, and here's the second one. He legitimately has a chance to become the greatest leader in CSGO right now. And a lot of people want to put that on existence or um, fetish. even like fetish or even exist. But if Pronax wins this major, it's going to be really hard to argue against him being the greatest leader in CSGO right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that whether you think players think about these things or not, I know they do. I yeah. mean, you, you are conscious about that. Everyone wants bragging rights. Everyone wants to be able to say, well, you know, look at my game in CV. Look what I've achieved. You know, that, that the word achievements is rife through gaming and especially esports. You wear it on your sleeve. Yeah. And uh, I, I think Pronax has been one of those guys who, like you say, maybe he doesn't get the plaudits. I mean, people still talk about existence yeah. uh, as a top captain, even though that his teams are underperforming. Pronax absolutely deserves respect. And, you go out and you earn it by coming up big in events like this. And I think Pronax goes a lot under the radar in the CSGO community because his strats aren't as flashy. They don't yeah. involve smokes, molotovs, flashes. It's a lot of teamwork and it really takes an eye to understand what he's doing with the teams when he forms and how he's getting these teams to the finals. And it's really a, it's, it's a work of art, like what, he, what he's doing with these teams. I mean, it's hard for captains in this situation as well, because we're talking about all the emotions that are going through your head. We're talking about that pride factor. We're talking about that nervousness, that fear factor. And then on top of that, you've got to be the level head. Yeah. You've got to call for the rest of the team. Yeah. You've got to see the big picture. Yeah. Um, can you kind of explain how you know guys like yourself do yeah. that in these situations? Yeah, so I mean, the main thing is that you have to, you have to research beforehand. You have to understand what the other team is going to do, and you have to be confident about your decisions. If you ever hesitate when you make a call, one of your teammates may, may doubt you and may not completely follow through with what you tell them to do, and then the whole strat's off, offline. So I think Pronax is a really confident leader and his teammates all trust him. And you can tell after their first major, they all said Pronax OP and things like that. They loved him. Uh, he's, he's a fantastic leader. His teammates love him. So he's not like one of those dictate, dictator leaders and, and he, he's, he's a team player. Yeah, um, and it's something to think about, you know, yeah. Devil Walk was one of those guys on stage. Yeah. If you remember the infamous bet to drop his pants and he dropped his <laughs> pants at Dream Act. Yeah, well, shout out to Devil Walk for your pants. Maybe, maybe we can get Devil oh, Walk to drop no. his pants again or something. But no. now, again, we've talked about this a lot. This six-man guy that is not that cheerleader is actually assisting with you know informational stuff. They both have that in, obviously, Devil Walk and uh, yeah. Pita, you know, which yeah. is new. So again, what a feather in his cap for Pita if he actually pulls this all the way through. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if you agree. I think one of the things Devil Walk's going to really have to do here is focus on the guys from LGB that have just come into the team and maybe haven't played in a you know, major football. Well, they haven't played in a yeah. major final yeah. before. I, I am worried about those two. They've played out of this world throughout yeah, this whole tournament. tournament. So there's really no reason for me to be worried about them. However, they haven't played at this level yet. And who knows, when they hold tab and they see that 300,000, 400,000 viewers mid-match, is that going to strike nerve in them? Hopefully not. Yeah, but I think that's what Devil Walk's going to be doing. Yeah. I, think I literally see, I, I mean, if I was a coach and I was doing his job, I'd be focusing on the guys that haven't been here before. What experience can I give to them? How can I keep them calm? Because they play brilliantly throughout the tournament, but again, your emotions can get you better of you in situations like this where it's just, just hugely important and, you know, money's on the line, all that pressure. And I, I know from talking with Devil Walk that he is that kind of, kind of person that yeah. can calm someone down. He's really good with people and can really talk someone through something. Pita, on the other hand, I've seen him be really tactical. I've seen him back here watching demos of other teams, really studying, getting, getting Nip the strategic kind of backing that they need. So he's on a different level, because Nip, Nip don't really need to be calmed down. They yeah. have this experience, so it's a different kind of coach. So it's interesting to see the clash of the coaches like that, too. Yeah. And I think one of the cool things, you know, we're obviously this pregame, we're talking a lot about the emotions, because we've talked about maps, we've talked about their aim skills all weekend long, right? Obviously. 10 of the best guys on the planet about to play right now. No One doubt. of the cool things that we've talked about a lot off camera is this new rule set where you're allowed one official timeout, again, much like sports, not a technical one, not a problem with your mouse or keyboard. And again, back in the day, like players would fake kind of that stuff yeah. to get the timeout they needed to, to either regroup, but now you might even see it like they're using a timeout to ice the other team, right? Yeah. They might be in the lead and they pull that. But we've seen Nip call some crucial timeouts that yeah. then won them some rounds afterwards. You know, you, you kind of get off that losing streak. Yeah. 
it's such a great thing to bring to the game, uh, purely and simply because, again, when your emotions are running away with you, and this is such a momentum-based game, it's so easy to lose one round, two round, three round, four round, five round, and before you know it, you're like, this is out of control, this is a runaway train. How do we put the brakes on? And we've never had that facility before, really. I mean, a few tournaments here and there have offered timeouts. I'm so glad that we've now got these at the highest level as standard. I'm thrilled, yeah. And even looking at the NIP LDLC match from earlier, um, NIP, I believe, called the timeout when they, they were down did. zero to seven. Yeah. yeah. And even though they didn't win that map, they got a lot of rounds late in that map, which I think propelled some momentum going into the second and third map. Yeah. So yeah. That, it really helped them going forward, in my opinion. So we have the, the NIP lineup here. Let's quick, quick walk through us. Yeah, you, you do this because you played against these guys. So obviously <laughs> we have the in-game leader, Richard Exist Landstrom. Uh, everyone's fan favorite, Patrick Forrest Lindbergh. He's, he's everyone's probably favorite the fragger. Probably the greatest CS 1.6 player of all time. And then we have Christopher Getright Aslan, probably the best fragger in the world, the lurker, um, clutcher, really does everything for NIP. Um, if he's having an off game, they may have a hard time winning this one, I'm not gonna lie. Adam Freiberg Freiberg, he's their entry fragger, really mad fragger, sprayer, kind of flashy player. And then we have Fiffler in um, as their opper and kind of the glue to the team. All right, I think we got the map veto ready, so we're looking for the zoom in on that, and then we're gonna, we're gonna Jump back in, yeah, and uh, and get the other roster in just. I a mean, second. again as well. Here's I want to ask you about this. So when the veto comes in, is there any chance that your emotions might get the better of you? Can you make mistakes in vetoes? Can you f overlook a potential map that maybe you didn't want? There can be some severe mistakes made in vetoes. NIP made a massive mistake in the last major by not vetoing Mirage and and letting uh, Virtus Pro end up playing that. Um, this major, I don't see that happening again. NIP is going to veto Mirage, and I think Fnatic's going to veto. NIP's best map, Nuke. So I think both teams are going to veto the other team's best map, and I hope that that's what we see, so that way we see some kind of even counter-strike on the other maps. Yeah. Yeah. We're still getting the veto organized, so actually yeah. let's pull up that other team sheet right now, and yeah, then we'll get that out of the way. So there you go, and again, you, you tell us all about Fnatic, uh, Sean, because sure. you know these teams inside out. So we have Pronax, the leader of the team, which is who we were talking about earlier, really the mastermind behind everything. You'll often see him taking some kind of risky peaks and kind of doing the flash peaks and helping his teammates out. Really the team player, um, support player on the team, and he'll do a lot of stuff to get information to make calls later on in the round. Uh, we have Flusha, he's one of their kind of key fraggers. Uh, in my opinion, he's more of a lurk fragger, um, but he will come up big and win clutches a lot in, in rounds. So he actually propelled them through versus Navi by winning a one on three to win it. Um, JW, probably the most known player on Fnatic. He will literally do anything, he'll mag, he'll buy an AWP, He'll CZ, he'll rifle, he'll do, he'll buy a shotgun, he will, he will buy any gun and he will get a 3K with it. Crims, one of their newest additions, solo site player, excellent player, team, team player. Um, you'll never see him making kind of individual plays and things like that because he's always doing stuff for the better of the team. Excellent player. Olaf Meister, he's their other new player that, that joined the team from LGB. Probably one of the best up and coming players in all of Europe. Um, excellent AWP. Excellent rifles. Um, in my opinion, the standout player to watch of this this upcoming finals. All right, let's get a zoom in on that map veto. Let's get this thing a rolling. Let's see. I'm, I like to say I'm so psyched. Rolling. There we go. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's see what we got here. So Fnatic's got that first pick. Yep, and it looks like they beat a nuke. And he vetoed Mirage. Yeah. You called that one, brother. Yeah. So now we have both Overpass and Cobblestone still remaining. Ooh, it looks like Fnatic picked Cobblestone. Wow. Oh, I wonder if that's just because they just saw NIP play Cobblestone maybe two times in a yeah, row. Yeah, maybe. So maybe I, they're... I'm really surprised by uh, that pick. Yeah, especially over Overpass, because we know Fnatic has an excellent Overpass. It's, it's what got them here yeah. versus Dignitas. So T side Cobblestone like, coming wow. up. Wow, that's... In the final that, of a major. That's... And cash. Wow, we haven't seen much cash lately. No, we haven't. And I know Nip, uh, they do fancy themselves on cash, oh, but... Oh, yeah, they're very good. Uh, you know, but, I, but I've seen them lose to some, you know, not great teams on yeah. it as well. It's that, That's an interesting pick, so... And I didn't quite catch the last one. Last map, yeah. Decider. V Inferno. map of Counter-Strike GO. <laughs> yeah. D Inferno. Inferno. Really? And that'll have Fnatic starting as the CT side, although okay, well, not, not so important on that map. What are your thoughts on the maps? I mean, I know we've talked mostly about emotions, but that veto, who, who do you think it favors? 
I th honestly, I think it favors NIP. They've been playing Cobblestone this whole tournament. They're mm -hmm. really warmed up on it. They've probably seen every scenario that can be thrown at them because they played it four times now, I think. They played it tons. So uh, I would have much rather see Fnatic choose Overpass, but apparently they have some maybe counters planned for NIP's Cobblestone. Um, going into ca Cash, which is was Nip's choice, mm. I think Nip are heavy favorites on Cash. Yep. Um, that's not really a map that I often see Fnatic play. Uh, they have yet to play at this tournament, I that's believe. Right. And yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even think I've ever seen Fnatic play Cash. So. Yeah, I think they had uh, one game at Gfinity against London Conspiracy, which they won 16-6. Okay. But London Conspiracy hadn't played it at all. Yeah. So uh, besides that, you're right. It's not a map they're going to be overly familiar on. And I'm just wondering, again, getting back to the sort of emotions and things, do you think maybe uh, Pronax has kind of overthought it there by picking Cobblestone first? Do you think he's maybe trying to, uh, you know, mind game Nip at all? He could be, because something that, something that is in your head after you play a best of three like NIP just did, where the other team, you know the other team just watched you play a map. You know they know all your tactics. So it could psych you out. It could make you do things that are just absolutely ridiculous and just literally dig your own grave. Um, so. And what do you make of this, right? So we've just seen Fnatic, they're up, they're doing the uh, three musketeers, hands all piled on, let's do it. Obviously five musketeers, I can't count really. Leg? And then you look over at Nip. <laughs> so casual. Uh, yeah, look at that though. <laughs> look at that leg. Serious. <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think? What, what does that say about the two teams? I think Nip is, Nipper are ready, they're ready. You see Forrest has the hand warmer out below his monitor, warming up his hands, making sure everything's feeling good, so. NIP are, NIP are ready. Okay. All right, well, there you have it, guys. Predictions. We're about to start this. Oh, yeah, there, yeah okay, I didn't want to throw you, uh, you know, get you set up for this, but let's have some quick predictions, really quick. <laughs> NIP 2-1, okay? I I'm just going to agree with the pro. It's been such a crazy tournament. All right, there you have it. Folks, this is the start for the $100,000. Second place takes a nice $50,000 home, but it's not even about the money at this point. It's about the pride, all those good things. That being said, first map, Take it away, on fire, Anderson Semler. Ow, ow. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is it, the grand finals. We finally made it, and it's going to be a rematch of the first major final. Yes, it is. This is revenge time for NIP or it's Fnatic's turn to take it once again with a slightly different lineup, but this could not, I don't think it could be any better than this. And the atmosphere here at Gamescom is completely off the hook at this point. It's perfect, man. It really is perfect. The crowd is hyped. There's a line all the way around the viewing area because these seats are up. People can't see. They have to wait to get in. It's crowded. Everybody wants to see this final. This is the final we were hoping for in the end because a rematch is a thing of beauty. Fnatic, as it was expressed on the analyst desk, they have so much to prove here. If they can take two major ta uh, championship titles, that's a strong claim to best team in the world right now. Yeah, and I think Sean put it very well. I think one of the guys to watch for on that Fnatic lineup is Olaf Meister, one oh, of yeah. the top up-and-coming players in the whole of Europe, which almost means the whole of the world. I think Cloud9 showed us at least this tournament that there, there's something to be said for North American Counter-Strike too. Wow. But going into this, I think Olaf Meister is going to be the man to watch on yes, Fnatic. Absolutely. Him and Krims both have come through so many times for that team. Olaf Meister, definitely the point man there for Fnatic, but now we're looking at the, the brain behind Nip Exist, who has been doing tremendous work, as well as Freiburg for Nip. But it looks like we are not wasting any time. We are going to get right into it. The pistol round about to begin here on Cobble. And this is all pressure on Nip to get a strong start here, because you can be sure that Pronax, <laughs> that last match versus LDLC, he was sitting there with his notebook, and he was scribbling away furiously. He knows exactly what Nip are going to be up to here. Yeah, I still consider this a really big risk, but Pronax, I mean, he's definitely proven he knows what he's doing this tournament. Otherwise, they wouldn't have made it so far. Fnatic versus NIP. And we are live. So welcome to ESL 1 2014 here in Cologne. Now let's see, Fnatic, they are starting on the more favored side, and NIP going with a lot of aggression and already losing a fair bit of health of Freiburg and Forest. So that's a problem, but they might catch Flusher here. Pronax already going down, Flusher got to get back to safety, but there is no safety. Freiburg almost takes him down after dropping his teammate through Flaren, goes down, Crims, the backup is here. Flusher stays alive and takes down Forest. There's a knife on JW, oh but it's no. not enough. Crims gets it. Crims in the first round. 
Yeah, on the Ix first map, has, nip, has knifed Exist. Yeah, and Exist knife his teammate. There's a double knife in the pistol. I think that officially initiates the grand final. That is a statement. JW wanted to make a point there. We do not respect you, Nip. This title is ours. We will claim our second major championship title. There's not a whole lot you can do about it because I'm going to actually shank you to get it. That's amazing. Fnatic with a fantastic start already in this map. And that is really, I mean, Nip, that has got to be a big blow dealt to their confidence here. I mean, that, that crossfire set up by Fnatic to hold off that B site, Flush is staying alive so long, and then to cap it with a knife. That is not how things were supposed to go here for Nip. Uh, I've, well, I think NIP are going to be pretty confident when it comes to, to losing rounds here. They have had nothing. Their whole run to this grand final has been nothing but close games. Mm -hmm. So at this point, if nothing else, they've proven to themselves and to everyone watching, they are capable of making these comebacks happen. So um, hopefully they won't lose their composure in the middle of the match here. Fnatic, on the other hand, they really have been looking dangerously strong in this tournament. Absolutely. I mean, they took out Dignitas in the semis, and that Dignitas is a team that we were all saying you have to keep your eye on them. Just like VP, VP getting taken out in the quarterfinals, but Dignitas into the semis, and you're thinking, okay, Fnatic versus Dignitas, there's no way to call it. This could go anyway, but Fnatic did it in style 2-0. So this is, I mean, they have all the confidence going into this final match here versus their old nemesis. Ninjas in pajamas, all of the pressure is on them. And so far, this second round, it doesn't look like Nip are going to be able to do to Fnatic what they did to LDLC in the last best of three. No, they did purchase an AK, which makes a lot of sense because you do get 1,500 for that knife. So no issue at all, you know, trying to pick up an AK and do something about it. Not really, I think, even a big investment for an IP. They didn't get the bomb down, so they might as well. Normally, they would have just gone for C sets and armor, mm -hmm. but because they had the knife, they could go for an AK instead, and that's kind of a cool switch up. But that's the benefit of that, because just to make it perfectly clear, you get $1,500 if you get a knife kill. That's why it's so valuable to go for it at times when you have the chance. And so. I totally agree with you. I mean, Nip going for it, why not, right? If they can catch Fnatic off guard, they've got SMGs. I mean, Pronax has actually got a Bison right now. If you can take advantage of that, that would be huge. But now, we have to see here, Nip not wasting any time at all, rushing straight out onto the B side. Crims holding solid with the help of Olafmeister. Yeah, and very nice hold here from the counter-terrorist side. They don't lose a single person. Crims gonna pick up a triple kill. And that is one of the things that NIP did have some success with last time they played this map was, was that rush out towards the B bomb site. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe Fnatic have figured that much out, but there are a lot of different options and NIP haven't tested out nearly any of them yet. Now they have rifles picked up, no AWP on either side, and JW still with a max 7, which is another point that uh, that Sean was picking up during the, uh, the pre-game analysis here, is that JW can use just about any weapon. He can, and he's famous for it, but we've seen what he can do, especially, I mean, Fnatic on Noob, right? That was the first time or the big time we saw that Swag 7 really being put to use for JW. He funded his enti his team throughout the entire half. He's done it in the past as well in Overpass. So JW is to be feared when he has that shoddy in hand. And he's already got $6,000 in the bank as well. So going into the next round here, Fnatic have plenty of options. They have all of the money. It's all on Nip now to get some big kills and actually take this fourth round by. And oh, there yeah. you go. Get right. Finding Crims just through the smoke there as well. Very finely done. Yeah. Tossing a Molotov down into the drop zone and then casually turns and takes down a player right through the smoke. It's a really annoying start for Fnatic. Oh, wow. JW down here in the middle. And this is a pretty cool position to play if you're going to have a max 7, yeah. then why would you not play when they have to get up close to you? It's and all of this is max 7 range at this point, so it's not an all bad idea. But NIP looks like they are adjusting a little bit. Leaving uh, one guy over towards A and moving everybody else over towards the B bomb side. They're gonna be jumping through the smoke here and not connecting his Olaf Meister. He goes down. Now it's a three on five. Flusher trying to bring it back. Will drop get right? Can they get into the bomb side? Pronax is still holding strong here. And there is not a lot of health on Exist right now. 20 seconds. There's the grenade. Boom. Exist is gone. If you flower next, Freiburg and Forrest are left. It's a two on two here. They must realize Pronax goes down. Freiburg again. Absolute clutch, Master and Forest from behind will drop JW. And the fourth round is a success for NIP. Sam, tell me, how long is Freiburg going to keep this up? I, I, I certainly hope for Nip's sake that it's going to be this entire best of three because he, throughout this entire tournament, has doing, been doing amazing work for this team, just getting entry frags, locking down those clutch rounds. Freiburg is a huge reason why they're, why they're here in this final right now. And I'm not surprised to see that it's him that makes it possible because for a second there, it was looking very nasty. Pronax sitting on that bomb on that B site. If Freiburg misses that shot, it's done. It's over for Nip. And we're looking at Fnatic with four rounds on the board. So this is is 
exactly how Nip have to bounce back in this. This is going to give them the confidence going forward now. But we already see, I mean, Fnatic had so much money to invest into this round. And speaking of confidence, JW just decided instead of hiding behind the smoke that was thrown towards him, he actually pushed through to take, try and take a shot before he fell back. So that's really a sign that he is feeling on his A game here. But he has missed uh, both the two options he had so far and just going to be waiting down in the middle here. JW with that AWP, exactly what we expect to see here. Olafmeister has it as well, and this is something that we have to mention here for Fnatic. Those bo both of those players are some of the best offers in the world. Olafmeister is terrifying with the weapon, but of course everybody knows JW and what he's capable of. But right now he's not exactly connecting with his shots, and he will have to fall back. Forrest will get the punish on Flusha, and that's actually the defense somewhat weakened here on the A site. They lose a man, and Fnatic, Fnatic have to start wondering exactly where Nip are going to be coming from. What's the adjustment? You gotta. This is such a big map, so getting pickoffs is really great. But if you don't do it too early, you're not gonna have that much time to get into a bomb site. So look at the clock here. 30 seconds. All of Meister still holding over by, and he's not gonna miss. Takes down Fifla and goes for a second peek. That one isn't gonna connect, but he's still back here. They're getting close now. All of Meister with a second. Are we gonna see a third? He's looking for the triple. He's not gonna get it. Get right. We'll take him down. But look at the clock now. Sam, the 14 seconds here for us. Job JW comes up from behind. Takes down Pronex. Crims alone. Nine. Nine seconds and he can't oh. stop the bomb plant. That that shot there was crucial for Crims. If he hit that, he won the round. If he missed it, this is what happens. Forrest will get another frag. That's four for him total in this round. But that was a shot that Crims, I mean, it was an opportunity. If he hits it, he wins the round for Fnatic. But unfortunately for him, he just couldn't quite react in time. Olaf Meister also with an impressive performance there. I mean, I like to see it that we actually have the ops split up as well. One on A, one on B. A lot of the time we've been seeing the ops, you know, double op on A, right? That's the, the go-to setup, but Fnatic already changing it up, trying to catch Nip off guard and really make them, uh, really make them wonder exactly how Fnatic are going to be setting up each round. Now they're actually going to be an eco Fnatic here, and they're moving up quite aggressively, but get right, going to dispatch of two of them quickly. And Freiburg down to, uh, sorry, Freiburg also picking up Pronax here, so this eco round, not really much of an effect, but I think it's, I like the fact that Fnatic actually tried to make something of it and, and try to see if they can catch NIP off guard. I mean, you're talking about a minimal investment here on Fnatic's part. If they can actually catch anybody with those CZs up close like that, they are lethal. And they only need to get a couple kills here to have this be an effective eco as far as Fnatic are concerned. Flush is still waiting right around the angle, just makes it, but Exist is going to peek out, and there you go. This is what we're talking about. Flusha, instant kill on Exist. And that's an excellent trade as far as he's concerned. He's got $300 on him. He just took, what, $4,500 off of Exist. That's a perfect play there for Fnatic. Yeah, that's uh, exactly how the maths work. Now, all of Meister's pushing up behind would be great if he could catch a kill, but he's actually stomping quite a bit here, thunderfooting away, and he's going to be going down. Fiflaren, um, not even really sure why, but somehow he ended up in the right place at the right time, and that's just how it works out. So that is going to be equalizing the score here. 3-3, three, three, moving into the seventh round. Already, I would say, NIP with a really good adjustment. Um, from what we've seen so far, it seems like you can make do with about six or six rounds or so in the first half on the terrorist side. That oh, is. yeah. Yeah, six, round, six rounds would be great, I think, actually, for Nip. If they could get that down, that would be fantastic. Uh, we have seen this turn into quite a CT-sided map. So, Nip, if, with this strong start, the, the ability to bounce back here after Fnatic take the initial three rounds is huge for them. And just like we were saying, I mean, a clutch win in that fourth round bye for them really set them on the right path. Nip are now the team to stop here. Fnatic, no fancy weapons for them. It's only going to be Colts across the board with, with some nades. Right now... Fnatic holding with just a single person in the middle with that drop zone, and that's actually something NIP haven't gone for yet, so Fnatic gotta make sure they, they stay awake and really keep you up to date there, because if they get a little bit complacent, if they get defocused here in the middle, that's gonna be a big problem. Mm -hmm. They gotta, you know, they're a little bit worried. You can see actually they're moving crimson here, because the longer it takes when NIP aren't hitting that, they, are, they keep thinking, well, eventually, probably something's gonna happen here. And they, it's all about guessing the right round at this point. It's going to be Forrest actually manning the AWP, takes a shot, manages to clip JW, drops him down to 20 HP. So that's going to force Fnatic actually into a bit of a rotation. Get right, instantly looking to apply pressure, pressure here. There's a man on his left, he flicks in time. He could get two, but he's not going to make it. Pronax will shut him down, brings it back to a four on four, and Freiburg will not find it. Pronax with two huge kills for Fnatic. Yeah, that was a big miss by Freiburg. Now they're pushing into the bomb site, but Flush right here. And this is where we saw Forrest hold yesterday. He's going to push up with the M4. Take down Exist. It's looking really good for Fnatic. Flusher with a double kill as well. Forrest alone. Going to get backstabbed. And a great round from Fnatic. Pulls it home. They only lose JW. 
But the fact is, that could have been a disastrous round for Fnatic. Mm. If Pronax goes down to Freiburg, all of a sudden, it's almost no way Flusher can hold the bombsite any longer. He gets cut up, exactly. It's crossfire town for Nip at that point, and they can just roll onto that site. Flusher in a very precarious position, really. He's He was able to get the drop on one man, but that is a... Uh, I mean, a very popular spot to be holding from. So you can be sure that Nip are, or should be at least, trying to clear it consistently when they make a play for that site. We'll have to see how effective it is in the future. But now, because of that round, Fnatic are able to buy up an AWP now for JW. And look at the absolute nerve on JW. He actually, again, walks past the smoke and double scopes up towards the sniper nest. If anyone else is out in that courtyard and they're looking towards him, he can't see a thing. I have no idea how he has the... Uh yeah, the nerve to do this in a grand finals for $100,000 at first place. I love how there's a little bit of symmetry here. This time it's JW tagging for us down to, you know, 20 HP or so. So, JW get, almost getting caught in that corner as well. Nip missing a bit of an opportunity to get the punish. But this is still anybody's round, in fact. Nip still moving around. I mean, they've only really left Forest over towards a slope like this. That's trying to set up and see if he can catch anybody rotating through. Once his teammates start to make noise on B, this is going to be the center of attention right here. This is actually what they've been doing almost every round, except the last one where they did end up trying to go to A and didn't work. So I guess NIP just decided, look, you know, B bombsite just seems to be working better for us. Can they get the right entry kill here? I think that's the key. Olaf Meister waiting in yet a new position. This uh, broken wall, as Steel's calling it, and he's going to pick up the first kill here on three Flaren. Freiburg goes down. Olaf Meister pistols out, almost gets the third one, but it doesn't even matter. The rest of his team is there to step it up, and that's a completely solid hold from Fnatic and a really good adjustment here for the counter-terrorist side. A very solid. I mean, you pointed it out, but that's a great position there for Olaf Meister to be holding. He's really making Nip guess because you see Nip are trying to adjust to Olaf Meister. That's why they throw that Molotov there to make sure that he can't be hiding behind that angle. He was so uh, dangerous at uh, with that AWP in the round before. So now they throw that Molly, but Olaf Meister is one step ahead of Nip. He's already changed it up. So a very solid hold there by Fnatic. Olaf Meister holding them at that point means that the rotation comes in with the rest of the defense and they're able to set up the crossfire and just obliterate Nip. So Nip now down to pistols again. Four CZs and one P250. Freiburg a purist. So just when it was looking like maybe NIP was going to take control of the game already in the first half here. And this is Fnatic's map pick. They bounce right back on the Fnatic lineup here. Drop zone. Going to be nothing but bodies falling down from the sky. There is Fiflaren and Forrest are left. And if Crims and the crew are just going to pick it up easily. JW can hear someone running here. Jumps up and actually a little bit dangerous. Knife is out as well. It's going to be a no scope for JW. A little bit of style points as well in that kill. Can he pick up Forrest as well? Be nice if they could not lose any rifles here. And they won't. So great play from Fnatic. That builds up their economy, their confidence. And also, you know, NIP realize now they have a lot more to do here. A lot of money. Look at this Fnatic scoreboard right now. 9,000 on Pronax. JW with uh, with about 7,000 and 8,000 on Crims, looking really smart. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this is now Nip starting to lose a little bit of control here in this uh, in this round because they really are going to have to win two back-to-back -back buy rounds against Fnatic before they can really get Fnatic down to that point where they're going to have to start questioning themselves: Do they eco or do they force? Nip now, ha I mean, it's it's going to be a long slog for them. They needed to maintain the momentum and keep Fnatic on the back foot, but JW has is not interested in that at all. Picks off get right to start, giving his team the advantage in this deep. Flusher all the way by the A bomb site, spotting a couple of people, and JW rotates back in. He's so mobile. Every round he's been over by A long, and then one round he just picks it up, goes to the, a, the B bomb site, and goes super aggressive. There's no way in hell NIP could have guessed that was going to happen, and they've only lost two people because of it. So right now, JW is doing a hell of a lot to work out the, this win for Fnatic. Pronax right. comes up with a headshot as well, and it's Forrest and Fry Flaren left here, and they're not even getting any kills right now. Uh, it's At that point, they, they're pinned down. They just can't get in. And Forrest would have had to have landed some sick headshots for that to actually work there for Nip, but it's going to be the rush down. The they wanted to switch. knife him. Yeah, I think they did want to set up for that. I mean, Fnatic are really, I don't. I think this is all like no holds barred right now. They, there are no lines that need to be crossed or anything like that. They have no respect. It's just going to be, we are going to grind you into the dust right from the start, Nip. Fnatic, this is all about ending this 2-0, not letting it go to a third map. Yeah, and actually, I think it might be even worse. I think it's actually on NIP to end this 2-0, because that third map's Inferno. And I'm not sure if Fnatic, I think I would favor Fnatic on Inferno against NIP right now. Um, that's obviously going to come down to the test here. JW up in that window room in the middle, and obviously it's an eco round from NIP, so there's not really much they can do here. But again, 
right now NIP aren't even accomplishing to pick up rifles from Fnatic, which means once they start winning again, they're going to need to win so many consecutive rounds. It's going to be really tough. Oh, and this is a brutal beat down here. Flush is somehow controlling the spray to get more. And he even shoots his teammate in the side of the head. Careful there. Get right, we'll find Krim. So at least there's one kill for Nip. They're going to force Fnatic to spend a little bit of money in the next round. But that's not good enough right now for Nip. Nip need these rounds, these eco rounds for themselves to be a bit closer, a bit more effective. They need to be taking two, three rifles off of Fnatic to really have an impact on their money. And still, I mean, JW with the spot at mid and basically Flush is setting it up perfectly to gun them down. A very quick, uh, clean round there for Fnatic. And now we go into the 12th round. Fnatic with eight rounds to, th to Nips three. Yeah, they've won the last five in a row uh, on the Fnatic lineup, so it's looking really good. Again, JW just pushing out here and scoping up. I really am impressed by by the confidence it takes to, to do this kind of work, because if someone's down there looking by the fountain outside or the statue or whatever it is, he's definitely going to be going down very quickly. And um, I, I, again, a different kind of setup here is JW is down in the middle, going to be taking down for Flaren. They just can't guess where he is. And it, as a result, how are you going to smoke or flash someone out if you don't know where they are? Because you can't smoke off every year on Cobblestone. There are so many pathways, no. that's not a, an option. It's just not possible. And um, like I feel like this really just plays to JW's strengths. Great kill there by Get Right, though. Catches Pronax pushing in. He saw the flash go by. He knew exactly what was happening. But Olafmeister with the control of mid is already going to get the flank going. Exist Freiburg down, but Get Right strikes. He's going to pick it up and bring it into a 1v3. But he's kind of caught in a box at this point. Crims is cutting off the access to B site. And there are two Fnatic members on that A site. So Get Right. This is the best case scenario for him here. If he could find this ki this kill instantly on Crims, and he is looking towards the right angle, but now there's just too many places for him to be checking. He turns around to check the site proper, and that's going to be it. Get right, getting caught. Fnatic now with nine rounds on the board, and that was actually a bit of a mistake on NIP's part because once they got into drop zone, that was really, really that was a nice execution. But what happened afterwards was that Get right was going uh, on the upstairs, and they actually went down the window to the right hand side. And if they had if they had timed that perfectly, they would have peeked out both sides at the same time. But two of them ran out, and Get right wasn't able to get into position in time. So I think they could have definitely done that better in IP. Now Get Right's up here, and is JW going to do it again? He's walking out, he's scoping up, and Get Right gets the better of the Star Sniper on Fnatic's lineup here. So that's a pretty good investment, and I think that position from Get Right was, uh, was based on his spawn. He mm -hmm. spawned close to that sniper tower and he said, I'm going to go for it. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised to see him swap that rifle with somebody else now at this point. Headed over to Forest, get an AK. But Nip now actually have the entry going for them. It's the first big advantage that they've had in quite some time. So we have to see how they decide to play this out because Get Right got that kill so early. They still have more than a minute left on this clock to start working around the map and seeing if they can get another pick. Nip really with the advantage going into this at this point. Freiburg, Fnatic, look mean, at this, look at this. Freiburg actually with a practice smoke there. This is a set strategy from NIP. That's definitely some uh, some homework coming into it here. And wow. they're gonna smoke off the right hand side of the entrance into the B bomb side. Olaf Meister, grenade gonna do some damage here and actually does a fair bit of damage to Forrest. Can they take Olaf? He's in the middle of everything. He gets taken out by Exist. Now Pronax has to hold the bomb side. Still 35 seconds. Can they deal with it? They will deal with it. It's Freiburg again. Crims and Flusher are both here. They gotta get in quick, but there's still a band backstabbing. Flusher takes down Freiburg. Like Where's the points. teamwork for NIP? Oh, they, they have to realize that there's another man on here and they're looking for him. They're expecting Crims to really push forward. I don't know why Crims is throwing his guns out there, maybe trying to bait a shot out. But he is going to get naded down to half HP. This is still a two-on-two -two situation and Nip need to find a way past because they're out of nades. They no longer have any way to cut these members off for Fnatic. Ten seconds left, but Get Right strikes, takes out Flusha, and just in the nick of time, Nip will find the plant. Now it's an impossible situation here for Crims. Too many spots to check at this point. They can set up the after plans for Nip. They should be able to. Not really the guy you normally expect to go out sniping here. Get right, but he's already got the double. Hey, he's going to pick up that triple. Get right with the AWP. That is a rare sight. And the few times that we have seen it, it's actually been pretty awful. But this time, it was absolutely what they needed. The first pick on JW, and then they got into the site. And I was just about to scold NIP because what it looked like to me was they had the entrance into B, they had Get Right down in the middle, he could have backstabbed them and it looked like that was going to be the perfect mm -hmm. move and then he decided, nope, I'm just going to walk in and take them out instead. We're going to take this fight straight up. Flusher with his rotation also giving the opportunity there for Nip to actually get past because Crims had to hold so passively. So Nip really just managing to make it work, played patiently, didn't try and rush anybody down. They just tried to play for the time and got it done. Get right, however, now once again out in mid, and he's looking to see if he can't find exactly where JW is hiding this time around. Looking towards the window, looking towards the apartments, but JW in turn is playing fairly passively this time. 
on his own side. But he's taking up a new angle on at every single mm -hmm. time. If you compare all the 14 rounds we've had so far, 13 rounds, you'll see that JW has... He might have been in the same place a few rounds later, but there's no two consecutive rounds where he's exactly in the same spot. And that is really frustrating for NIP right now. They've, they've found him and that's half the battle right now. At least they know he's on this side of the map. That's true, and they do know that that A apartment, of course, is going to be the highly contested spot for that A for that A bomb site. Because as you can see, either you go down through the ramp, which is wide open, and you don't want to be running at JW across wide open ground, or you try and push through the apartments. But JW and Wolfmeister both have those AWPs, but they have been split up again. There's Flusha managing to strike and pick off Forrest, who was working up that ramp. And now, Fnatic have to prepare the defense here for the B push. Yeah, Olaf Meister has been boosted up here. In fact, it's a really great position. He's going to fall back down to safety, but not quick enough for Freiburg, who picks up the headshot. Krim's got to stay alive here. He can just wait, hold back here for teammates to come in. It should be all right, but he goes down through the smoke. Get right will pick up the killer. And I think a big mistake on Krim's part here. Eight seconds now, and they got to get this bomb down. Flush just rushing up. Trying to see if he can stop it. He's going to pick up the one. Four seconds left, and it's a one on one, and they can't put the bomb down. Flush is going to survive the round, and NIP will run out of time and lose it. And now Flusher. If he gets this kill, that's going to be even worse. Oh, Freiburg backing off. Freiburg will get the kill on Flusha. He stays alive, and that was so important. But get right, I think he actually got caught on the wall trying to make the jump up to that site. And with so little time, there was no time. There was no time to go for a re-jump, right, for a second try. And really just Nip playing it down to the wire. But once again, Freiburg, individual play, I think, is what's really determining this here for Nip, whether they get these rounds or not. Freiburg, again, able to get multiple kills and just clear up the defense because Fnatic were ready. They were prepared. They had already rotated a guy over from that B side, or from that A side, rather, to make sure that Nip weren't getting through. And somehow, once again, Nip, with the help of Freiburg, stormed the site. They just need to do it with the next, uh, another 10 seconds, basically, to work with. If they could time it so they have another 10 seconds, then that bomb does go down. Nice pick up from JW. Takes out one of the few players who didn't have a rifle here. The other three do have AKs. We're in the 15th round and NIP. I'm not sure four is enough to work with. I think a minimum is actually five. Four, 11 would be a really ridiculous comeback from NIP if they could do that in the second half. I, I believe the magic number they're looking for here is five. They I do agree, have a couple of AKs to work with and even a few smokes so they can still execute here. But I think right now what they've been doing for a lot of rounds is also very, should we say, expected for Fnatic because they put Forrest somewhere with a bomb site, and then everyone else goes B. So as soon as they find Forrest, that's almost an instant tell that probably everyone else is going to be a B. Yeah, Nip really showing that this is the this is the bomb site that really worked on the clearing everything. Pronax waiting in his little corner. This is the Pronax spot, just spraying, and he gets it with the near final shot. Pronax with the headshot on Freiburg clears it up, but they do manage to strike back. Nip, the flank comes in from Crimson. He can't do it. Get right, gets him first, and this is now just exist alive, but not for long. Olaf Meister removes him from the map, and it will be an 11-4 finish at the end of the first half. Fnatic with an excellent performance on their CT side. This is definitely doable here going into the second half for Fnatic. I absolutely agree. They did pick the map as well, so you got to wonder if they have uh, either been studying a little bit or secretly preparing or whichever way you like it. Either way, they do have a really, really good first half. And Come on, Forrest. Easy skins, easy life. He needs to make it happen. I want to see Forrest grin. We need the Forrest troll grin. Well, maybe that's going to happen if they end up winning. If not, I'm, I'm not really sure. <laughs> NIP, this oh, is... Oh, there it is! Somebody printed it out! Awesome! I'm loving the posters so far. Third major in a row that they've managed to make it to the grand finals, and they've lost the last two. First time it was to Fnatic, second time it was to Versus Pro. This time they're up against Fnatic again with a slightly different lineup. But look, that's not even the really interesting thing is that part of that old lineup is still here in Devil Walk, who's behind them. One of the guys who helped to beat NIP the first time around. So if anyone has, you know, that little extra bit of insight, knows a little bit about the patterns they play in, how they might react to a certain situation, Definitely Devil Walk could be that man. You know, Devil Walk is, is the man that, that, I mean, it's so fitting for him to be the coach as well, because even knowing exactly how Fnatic interacted as players, right, before the change, the, before, before the roster change, Devil Walk was like kind of the, the older brother makes father of the team. You know, everybody would go to him for guidance. He would be the one to keep everybody together, solving any kind of arguments, problems that ever came up. Like that, this team would not have held together if it weren't for Devil Walk. So it really is fitting to have him as the coach because the players all trust him. He is uh, I mean, their go-to figure. But Olaf Meister and Krims coming into this team has really been such a strong addition. I mean, we, we, you, you heard the news and you, you, you gasped, right? You know, Schneider and Devil Walk off Fnatic. This is, a, this is incredible. And they bring in Olaf Meister and Krims, but it's only been a good thing here for Fnatic. I mean, obviously, they're sitting, uh, once again, 
in a final for a major. Yeah, and with a with a fairly newly minted lineup, but if you look at the history though, that's exactly what happened when Pro Natural Sanded and Fnatic, they got to play one tournament, that was the MSI tournament in Beijing, China, and um, and then they went straight into DreamHack and won it. They had about a week and a half to play with that lineup, and they won the, the first major tournament. So there is something that Pro Natural is able to do, and that's also what Sean Gares was talking about during our analyst panel here. Now, it's going to be the second half coming up, so once again, welcome Fnatic and NIP. Best of three, and this is the first map, second half, so you're just on time. Look at how they're really trying to sneak in here, Fnatic. They want to get as many bodies as close as possible to really take this by surprise. Everybody goes thundering down, but Force is going to get one. Get right here with the CZ, gets two. Two headshots for Get Right, and he stops the push cold. It's into a two on four, and Fnatic looking to get the edge on Nip and catch him by surprise. Completely flounder. That was almost like a build order loss for, for Fnatic. NIP really had a good setup to deal with this. I still think it's a really cool idea for Fnatic because if NIP just have the one man holding here, that's going to be a perfect entry. But Forest and Get Right both, and especially Get Right at that range with the C said, not at all bad. But this is not over yet. Olaf Meister has picked up a USPS and he's going to try and see if he can snipe someone in this B bomb site. 40 seconds is a problem, and the bomb is also dropped in there. But 2 1 4. Well, they still have 40 seconds, that's the important bit here. If it was 20 seconds, 15 seconds, this would be an impossible situation for Fnatic, but at least they still have a little bit of time to hunt for the frags. But just Nip holding so passively right now is its key. Freiburg staying alive, that is it as well, and this is going to be the end. Crims gets caught, and Nip will pick up the pistol round here in the second half. It was crucial that they do so, and they do it in very fine fashion. And a round like that really makes me think, and we can't really test this, except if we ask Pronox afterwards, if he actually went for the idea of, um, you know, he just looked at them, at them at the games that NIP had played and thought, all right, previous rounds in the, in the eco, they've been having just a single person there. So you know, I'm going to try, I'm going to hope that they do the same thing. And NIP maybe didn't. We're going to have to go back and test that. But now oh, yes, we're definitely. at the 17th round. By getting, I mean, getting into it, you know that Pronax was definitely taking notes when Nip were playing LDLC. I mean, we've, we've seen plenty of games from Nip on this map versus Cloud9 versus the whole lot. So really, you know that Pronax has a lot of information to go off of, but that's the power of Nip. They're able to change up their game at will. They've made the adjustments necessary. They're playing Pronax, and Pro Pronax is playing into their hands, really. So. Good kill coming in here from Olaf Meister. Get right will manage to nade him into oblivion, however, and Fifth Lauren finds one as well. Get right looking to use that Pro 90. Disgusting weapon. But flush up. I'm still not really a fan of him picking it up, but actually on this map he has made it work a couple of times, so who am I to question it? I there's asked another, him, I, there's okay. another thing here that really comes into this as well when it comes to trying to end this strat on a map that that nobody really knows how to play, which is that NIP, if they realize, okay, Pronax has been looking at how we play, let's try and change it up. How many go-to strands do they really have? This isn't like on Nuke or Dust2 or something, you could go years back and say, okay, well actually maybe NIP could go years back yeah. and think, how, how do, did, does anyone remember any, any kind of cobblestone strat from 1.6 we can pull out? But other than that, they just have a few weeks where they've been looking at it, and that doesn't leave them with much. No, not at all, and not, not half that time, uh, just like half a week to really apply, I mean, practice anything at all on this map. We are seeing Nip evolve live here on this map. They're, they're, going, they're going into each official match and they're getting better each and every time when they come out of them. So this is, this is why Nip are the most consistent team in the world. This is why every team fears them. Their ability to just adapt on the spot. Forrest will find JW up in A apartments. There's still a second man here, but not for long. Before with a great headshot, 5-7 in hand. He has yet to upgrade to a rifle as well. But that 5-7 is lethal and Exist is getting dropped down, but Get Right's got the Pro 90. Fnatic back off. They don't want any of that. I love this double hold from NIP. I think it's such a good idea having two people here towards the drop zone. Olaf Meister goes down as well, and it's a round where actually NIP don't lose a single person. Freiburg will uh, be very low on health here. Right now, and this should be a huge concern for Fnatic, it's Get Right top fragging with 19 kills. And once Get Right is fired up and, and up and running, and we saw how he reacted to the victory against LDLC, once he's on, on point, Really, really terrible things can happen to your team. Yeah, and talking about Get Right, you know, he has been very inconsistent, actually, showing some of his uh, lowest performances in his, in his CSGO career in recent months. So for him to come in strong into this Grand Finals and top frag here, that's going to give him a huge boost of confidence. And you're definitely right. That is going to be a very sad time for Fnatic if Get Right really gets on a roll, because that'll boost the rest of his teammates along with him, Freiburg, Forrest, and then Nip become that, that monster, that Godzilla of CSGO, that is just unstoppable. 
Now from that first half, 11-4, now all of a sudden we're at 11-7 and it's only a four round difference that doesn't seem like so much, but Fnatic can take a big leap forward here by winning this round and breaking down NIP's economy a little bit. Two in a row and Fnatic almost have this map, so it isn't as, uh, as bad as it seems here. NIP, they're closing in, but Fnatic can still take it. Absolutely. They have got full buy right now going into it, so we have to see exactly how they're going to make use of these nades. I mean, we can see Flusha setting up right now. Thank you, Vendetta. And we are going to see exactly where this smoke is going to go down. It's a similar one to the, to which the, the one that Freiburg went for, exactly. Blocking off that spot onto the B site so that the crossfire becomes more difficult and it forces rotations out of uh, Nip. They have to actually change up their angle to cover this site effectively now that those smokes are down. But hey, Forrest doesn't have any problem with that. Two kills for him in the blink of an eye. Yeah, and they fell into the drop zone again, and the double hold for NIP really seems to be effective here. If you found spots, one person down the middle, that's frustrating. And actually, Fnatic have decided we're going to go for an A push, and I think part of this A push was actually the people jumping down into the middle. So now that they're gone, it doesn't just it doesn't work as well. It's kind of a pin, so where one half is missing, and JW coming in in a one on four here. The bomb is dropped in the middle. There's only 10 seconds, and he's going to go down. Four is one, two, three, and four. That's almost an ace. It's very, very close here. And it's going to be 8-11. Forrest jumping up to 14 kills in this round. Yeah, Forrest is just everywhere, and that's what I'm talking about. If Get Right gets rolling, Forrest isn't far behind. Freiburg as well, sitting with 12-1 and 12. These are the three heavy hitters here for Nip. I mean, exist as well, but they're, you know, the thing is, is that right now, these three players, they're being very greedy. They aren't, they aren't interested in sharing it all with their teammates. Fifarin and Exist sitting at four frags, but that's not a problem if Nip are winning the rounds. Fnatic now sitting on a pistol round again. They have to eco. They aren't able to get the bomb plan, and that's a crucial point to be made here. That Bonus $800 could make all the difference for Fnatic and get them those guns, but it's not going to be the case. Get right, changing up the angle yet again. And Exist uh, changing the frag score there, up to five now. Freiburg goes down to Pronax, that's a really good pistol kill coming in here, but they should be able to stabilize, and it's going to be a round where planning the bomb again will be very difficult here. Pronax made it to the bomb site, but he forgot the bomb, so that is uh, not exactly an ideal situation. I mean, look at the, actually uh, how it's breaking down for Fnatic right now. Everybody very cons consistent across the board. Olafmeister with 18 sitting at the top, and that's, I mean, that really just goes to show he is the man who makes things happen for Fnatic. Flusha and Crims right behind him. Pronax and JW not too far behind. So, I mean, really, everybody's playing fairly consistently here on Fnatic's side. Now it's just a matter of them figuring out exactly what Nip are changing in their defense, because you know that Pronax right now is going through his head exactly what are the changes, how do we adapt to them, and how do we take advantage of this? Well, it must be a, a source of really big frustration if you think you've got a team figured out from watching them just play. Then you get in the map and they switch it up just maybe enough that it's not going to work any longer. Can you actually then make a counter adjustment? I think that's that's an even harder task than the one NIP was faced with. But an opening pick is an opening pick and that goes for any map. JW, he gives them one onto the top fragger here. One of the top fraggers is this forest. Get right is still alive, of course. and. It's a good start for a Fnatic. And this really works for Fnatic as well. Now we have to see exactly where they take the bomb, and it is shaping up to be a bit of an A play here. Four guys gathering towards that A slope with JW on high, watching their backs with that AWP, and Fnatic gearing up for this push. Nip, they have gone for the rotation to bolster the defense here. They, um, Get Right is now covering with Viflaren. But if Lauren, this is going to be a crucial shot. He needs to land it instantly. As soon as he sees them coming up the slope, he has to drop what? that man. And there you go. He spots JW first, but Lauren coming out ahead for Nip. How did nobody see each other? It looked like they were just scoped up against each other for such a long time. That's a huge kill. Get right picks up one and gets a second one. Can he get third? Not quite. Buffy Flaren is there with a quick double end. It will be Pronax left. One on three and the clock is ticking down here. 19, 18 seconds. If he could get the bomb plant, that would give Fnatic so much more money. Buffy Flaren with a triple kill. And that's about time that Robin Johansson steps it up and he will do it. Now out fragging exists. And you are right, because Fiflaren and Exist, they're loaded on the scoreboard, and the match against LDLC on this very map, Fiflaren had a long stretch where he killed absolutely nobody, mm -hmm. and it nearly cost NIP the game. So if he can step it up, even 10%, that could be all that NIP need. It could be all that it takes, and Get Right doing a very good job there, setting it up. That one-two combination defense on a site. Fiflaren peaks, draws the attention, Get Right gets a frag. Get Right peaks, draws the attention, Fiflaren takes a man out. So the defense there working very well here. Nip now having to shut down Fnatic once again, who have managed to put together a respectable buy. Quite a few nays to work with, but Fiflaren waiting up in A-apps, decides to back off, and that single smoke should stop the push here from Fnatic. They won't be able to rush through. 
Really dangerous the post that they were with the, with that AWP. I really want him to go back and take a longer distance here. So he's gonna do that. So that's a really, really smart move, I think, from, from Fiflaren. Now they only have AK, so this time he doesn't have to deal with JW's AWP, but can he still get the kills up in the back here? JW peeks out and there's a firing squad waiting. They take him down through that wood panel. Forrest with the headshot right through, and has come Crimson. He's gonna pick up the one, the two. Can they do more than that? They need more. Two flowering picks up one. No scope, misses, and it's a two on two. Fnatic have a chance here. They need to pick up this round. They gotta do it. They've lost so many in order. They've not won a single round in the second half. Now is the time for it. Yeah. 38 seconds, and Freiburg is in a really good position. Position. He's covering the bomb. They have to pick it up, get into the bomb site without losing a single member here. And that in itself is not an easy task. In fact, I think they want to go and try and see if they can make a two on one before they do it. Flash pops in and Exist is down. Great play from Pronex. Tactical genius here. Now Freiburg is going to be walking around. That bomb is down. And Freiburg looking for a way to equalize the situation. He's going to be walking up. Spots Pronex here in the corner. Takes him down. Turns around for the 180. Still 15 bullets left. Freiburg clutches it. Are you kidding? It's going to be a double. He does it again and again and again. And there's nothing to be said, really. Speechless that Freiburg manages to pull it off. I mean, really, walking in there, and you already saw, he knew exactly where the second man would be, where Flusher would be holding from, trying to control the spray, does the 180, but keeps his cool. Fnatic and Ninjas in Pajamas both have ice in their veins for Pronex to slow down the pace and turn it into the 2v1 in the first place. He knew how much time they had. He knew he could get the advantage for his team, but then individual performance once again strikes, and we do have Nip actually managing to even things up here. It is now 11-11. Nip with the advantage going into it. Still with the money, and quite a bit of as well on Fifth Lauren and Exist both. They have no worries here. They can keep the pressure ratcheted up against Fnatic. Because we luckily don't know how this game is going to end, we can't really call the MVP yet, but at this point, Freiburg is in the lead by miles and miles and miles. I have no idea how it is even possible for one person to clutch that many rounds in a single tournament. Uh, he has been the MVP. It's pretty clear at this point. If Nip were to take the entire thing, he gets the vote. And that is the point. There's no discussion there. The number of times that he saved Nip's bacon. Fnatic, they have to know this as well. And you, I mean, you, there may be a tremor there, but then again, it is fitting for it to be Fnatic, or Freiburg rather, versus Flusha in a 1v1. The clutch players for both teams, and Flusha as well, which was said earlier, you know, one of the highest, um, basically, statistically speaking, at least earlier in the year, the, the best clutcher in the world. So for Freiburg to take him out, that's not a bad statement. And once again, Nip are going to be shattering Fnatic's confidence. This timeout, I think, is basically and them trying to slow down the pace. Well, there was a PC issue, actually, so they get a bit of a free timeout, which mm. is definitely great for Fnatic. They need it. I think you're right, though. That was a soul-shattering round because the move that Pronax did, the decision to say, norm no, the normal play would say, let's focus on getting the bomb down, and then the pressure is on the counter-terrorist. They're going to try and come and we'll pick them off. And Pronax decided, no, wait, let's make it a two-on-one instead. I'll just flash in with, an, with a perfect flashbang, godlike flashbang, and takes down Exist and puts them in a two-on-one, and Freiburg still takes it away. That is something that really cuts deep into Fnatic's mentality right here. And, this pause could really help them. Yeah, I mean, this is really, it actually couldn't happen at a worse time. I mean, if this is not a pause, if they're just resetting, I mean, this could not happen at a worse time for Nip because this is this is the moment when you want to actually just continue. Oh, look at Forrest, flirting with the What's camera. Up, Forrest? That, that, this is when you want to keep pushing. You don't want Fnatic to have time to catch their breath. You want to keep that pressure on. So Nip need to find well, need to keep it up on uh, Fnatic right now and not let them get that second breath. Fnatic actually putting quite a bit of pressure early on here. They want to catch that first step on Nip, getting out onto this B site so quickly here. This is now going to break down. I mean, we're falling off. Monster is completely blind at this point. Switching to JW gets a double mow down. Freiburg and Exist cleared up. But then Fifth Lauren comes into play with the AWP, takes out Flusha, and brings it back to a four on three. Fnatic will be able to get the plant, as I say it. And now the countdown begins. Nip are on a clock. They have to find a way to root the Fnatic defense out of here because the tables have turned. It's now Nip that are invading the site. Fnatic have such great positions. Pro Pronax holding back right here is really good. Trusting in his teammates to get the bomb down. JW close. Actually, Fiflaren takes him down. Pronax jumps down, but I think they've heard it. Get right is here. He takes him down. What's going on? Fnatic have the advantage, but not anymore. Now it's Olof Meister and Krims left. Two on two. Krims goes down. Olof Meister on two HP. Runs out with a knife, and they get the round anyway. There's no time. No, there is. Oh, what?
in the last they seconds they get the defuse. I can't believe it. It looked like Olaf Meister thought that was going to be over too. He just charged him with the knife out. Uh, there was, uh, that was one of those split second uh, diffuses and it went the right way this time. Nip actually coming out ahead with the retake and just in the nick of time, make it happen. Freiburg raising his arms and shouting at the crowd. I mean, that's a monster right there that you do not want to wake up. If Freiburg joins the Get Right and Forest party, this is going to be very sad here for Fnatic. But Fnatic, they get that plant, they have to keep their cool. Because of that plant, that bonus 800 for everybody, they can get a very respectable buy-in here and just keep hammering it. Nip, they have to find a way to break the, co the confidence that the other Swedish team has developed here. I, I don't think anyone is going to be joining Ed Get Right right now. He's at 27 kills. That's uh, at the very least nine ahead of anyone else in this game. That's completely monstrous. This is the rebirth of Get Right because he's really not been playing his own game. This has been a topic all tournament long. Just what a slump Get Right's been in. But he's somehow managed to recover himself just when it matters the most. The perfect time to peak in the whole tournament has to be in the grand finals. Exactly. That's the thing. Of all the times to have your star performance, it is now in the first map on Cobble that Fnatic have picked to mess with your heads. And Nip, they're responding magnificently right now. Fnatic are hard pressed, but Get Right trying to will actually catch them off guard here with a bit of an aggressive flash into a peak. Fnatic, they don't flinch. 30 seconds left, and now they're actually going to start feeling the pressure here. Fnatic have to go for this. They don't have any time. They have to overwhelm the defense immediately, but Nip are playing this so perfectly. They fall all the way back to the edges of the site. They're going to hold so passively from here on out and try and just do their best to burn time off the clock to force Fnatic into a tight spot. Freiburg, that double spray down sealed the deal. There is nothing Fnatic could do any longer after that. All of Meister's gonna charge in here, but the time is gonna end it. In fact, Get Right with a headshot pushes himself up now to 29 kills. He's one away from dropping a 30 bomb with just 24 rounds on uh, played here on Cobblestone. This, this setup from NIP is very, very different from the one they had when they played earlier in the tournament against uh, Cloud9, I believe. Sure. Then, what they did is they had exist in the low ground back towards the guard spot that, uh, that we managed to turn it. And that was something we actually pointed out when I was casting with Steel. This is something we talked about quite a bit during that game, is that, well, if he just moved up to the back, it'd be way better. And it seems like NIP have figured out exactly the same thing. So that's a, a really big adjustment. You can be sure that they were, that you can be sure that they were doing their homework yesterday and today, and especially after the LDLC match. They had 20 minutes, but Nippa found the time to adjust. Fnatic are the ones reeling now. And Fnatic are actually running out of rounds now that to work with here. Nip are on the favorite side of this map, and Fnatic just keep trying to break the line. But Nip, they're keep, they're, they, the confidence and the, key, and the cool that they have right now under pressure is remarkable. Making the right call in the last round, playing the clock against Fnatic, and once again, Fnatic not able to find an entry frag. That's another thing that Nip have been very good about so far towards the end of this half. They aren't giving Fnatic any kind of way in, really, to be able to, uh, to get an easy uh, way into a bomb site. But if they can get this kill on Fiflaren, that might open it up, but it's not going to work out like that. Fiflaren imposing his will until Flusher will take him down, but Freiburg and Forrest and Exist is a team effort. Everyone chiming in. Freiburg, so Flusher's going to be alone here. Gus got a headshot while Flash as well. It's a really impressive AK shot. And the second one, nicely done, Flusher. Can we get a little bit more here? He's going to nearly spray down Forrest. He's so close, Flusher. An incredible clutch, and he almost did that one on four. Look at Get Right's reaction as well. They knew just how close that was. Had Flusher picked that up, he was actually in a great position behind that boulder as well. He wouldn't have been gunned down immediately. That could have been a very, very close play. And of course, it's Flusher going for the clutch, nearly getting three frags. But now we approach the crunch time here. Nip on 14 rounds, one round away from securing match point in overtime at the least. Nip have won 10 rounds in a row in this second half. Fnatic have nothing to show for it at all. Their terrorist side strat or their, their attacks to these bomb sites, they've been failing every single round and now now they gotta make it work. If they lose this one, I'm not sure they can come back. And it will be Forrest opening up. More grenades raining down in the middle. They gotta make a move on it here, but Get Right steps it up. And now Fnatic, what are they gonna do? They're three on five. They gotta find a kill quick, but I'm not sure it's happening. Get Right will pick up a double end flush. Look at Forrest, action style, jumping down, and that's gonna punish them. That's gonna punish them. Exist missing a huge opportunity. Flusher, if he takes him out, this is over, but Exist makes it happen. And Olafmeister now caught at the bottom of the slope. The bomb on the other side of the wall. The wrong 
side of the wall, and he's only got three HP. He's trying to find a different angle, but Exist will find the frag, and Nip are now on match point. 15-11, one round away from securing the first map in this best of three. You need two maps, and they're halfway, they're nearly halfway there. But I think, I think that was actually a bit of a, a mistake there from Nip, really. I think yeah. they got a bit ahead of themselves, jumping down and giving Fnatic a way back into that round like that. I completely agree, and it is, it's not just a mistake because they lost all those people, it's a mistake to assume that you ha you've done, you you've won already. Fnatic can take five, four rounds and reinforce the overtime, that is definitely a possibility. And even then, there's still a whole new map, so you can't just take this for granted, but Exist will open up, sprays down one, Freiburg, and Freiburg again before he finally drops. Now it's a two on three. They're running into the bomb side. I'm not sure Fnatic have any control of what's going on right now. They need smokes, they need flashbangs, they need to zone out the orbs that are looking into the bomb site here. Put that on the bomb and defend it, but it's gonna take such a long time. And if you Flaren has really been stepping up his game here in the second half. He does miss the shot, but Forrest will not. Now it's a three on one, and ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna be NIP taking the first map away from Fnatic here in the grand final at ESL1 Cologne. What an upset. This is the map that Fnatic picked. Yeah, this was all Fnatic. This was all of them here. And that was a perfect CT half from Nip. You can be sure that Fnatic felt confident going into this second half here, that they had Nip figured out. But Nip, they, they, I mean, they surprise us all. And they will take the first map. They have the advantage going into the rest of this best of three. But let's go ahead and break down this game at the end analysis desk. All to you, Scoots. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, the Room on Fire guys, they are they are doing an awesome job this weekend. You know, they started it for us. Uh, gotta love Anders and Semler. But again, uh, amazing stuff. Uh, you know, it's too early to say if 411 is a, a good, okay side, bad side. You know, everyone says it's kind of like the old cobble. It is CT sided. Uh, but again, 12 straight rounds from the pistol on, and Nip uh, secures themselves uh, yet again. Uh, uh, it's safe to say they are the best team playing Cobblestone on the planet. Yep, yep. Uh, other than that Epsilon match, the first match they started <laughs> off on Cobblestone, they have come back in rare form. They are epic. Um, that was a performance made of, that, that's a champion for performance right there that we saw. Um, we haven't seen Nip do something like that in the finals of a major yet, so I bet that takes a huge load off their shoulders, and I would be super scared going into this cash map if I were Fnatic right now. It's got to be absolutely crushing for Pronax. Uh, I literally cannot express this enough. He's gambled here with this pick. Yeah. He said, we're going to play you on Cobble. We're confident. We've got strats. And it looked good, CT. They had it locked down. You know, it was a brick wall. 11 to 4 at half time. What have you got up your sleeve for terrorists? And it turned out that this guy that we've hyped up as a genius didn't have anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quite the Houdini right there, huh? He didn't really have anything there. So, um... That I think the hugest round of the whole half right there was that Freiburg one versus two, yeah. where we all just kind of got out of our chair and yeah, what, we, what we just went, happened? We went crazy. So he, he literally followed that guy right out the connector, fragged him, and then hit an amazing one shot on the guy's sight, who I don't know why, but people keep peeking him yeah. in that same scenario. Freiburg literally won uh, against don't the last peak match. The Freiburg. I, I don't get it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, as well, I, I want to say, like, it, if uh, Nip do go on to win this major, everyone on that team needs to drop down and just kiss the feet of Freiburg. <laughs> Not just because of that clutch, because yeah. he did it on Cobble with the pistol yeah. against you guys. If you remember when you didn't check that corner on that mm. eco round, the smartest player of the whole tournament. Oh. Sorry again to bring about, it up. Yeah, I tried but, to but forget seriously, that. But <laughs> seriously, if, 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 so if that didn't happen, they're, out, they're already out. So Freiburg has really proven his class this tournament. And uh, again, just what, what a player and what a team. Yeah, uh, that was definitely a, a half. That was amazing. I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words because they just absolutely dominated them. A wasn't open, B wasn't open, the drop down got slaughtered. Um, other than that Freiburg one versus two, I, there wasn't even really a close round, I felt like. No, you're right. I mean, and this is what this is what's so deceptive about this uh, Ninjas in Pajamas team at the moment. What we're seeing is they'll typically have one bad half. They'll really get to the brink where they're out, and you think they're done. This is it. They're yeah. done. And then they're not done. <laughs> they just find this other gear. They find uh, a way to win an eco, or they just pull off a crazy strat, or they buy a gun that no one else has ever bought before <laughs> in competitive play and get a four-man with it. I mean... It, it, it's such an incredible story. If they go on to win this major now, playing as poorly as they have, uh, uh, just scraping by, uh, 
it, it just makes no sense. I mean, I, I'm going to be lost yeah. for words for a I, change. We, we all thought that NIP looked in really weak form early in the tournament, and there was a lot of posts on the forums really asking asking for heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly. it was, My skin. It was, it was brutal. <laughs> so um, they've really bounced back, and they've proven why they are the team to beat in the CSGO scene. I want to say as well, because uh, we brought it up in the previous round when I was with uh, MBK, I uh, could see Fifth Lauren have a much improved game over uh, the last bit of cobble, and that brings us nicely over to the uh, stats. You can see Fifth Lauren, uh, when we, he last played, it was 5 for 19 for him overall. Uh, so going 12 for 20 and getting off the bottom, I mean, that's good for him to do that in a final, and I hope people start maybe cutting him a bit more slack. And literally, this is the picture-perfect scoreboard that probably NIP would want to see going yeah. into this final, is they want to see their star players get right in for us just like that 32 and 16 oh, that's just a that's dominant. That's uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, like I, we, we didn't even get round to talking about get right, but right yeah. from the start, uh, that first pistol round when he just dropped down and got like three kills <laughs> yeah. over the CZ. I yeah. mean, it, it, he. This is what he does. I mean, at the end of the day, he is that mad fragger. But to have consistently done it and now doing it in a major, it's it's great to see. He's just you know the god. Yeah, he really is. He's always kind of lurking in the background. Um, he, he really uses his teammates in an excellent way. And I don't mean that as in he's baiting, because he's not at all. It's, it's planned. So he really knows how to use his teammates to the maximum capabilities and get the frags in the easiest ways possible. I've he, talked to Nip about this as well. Yeah. What they do is they, they distract. They yeah. fire guns, and, and people peek the wrong way, and then just the timing is perfect. Exactly. Get right comes against the wraparound frags. Exactly. It's, it's not baiting at all. What it is is just excellent Counter-Strike. It's top level. Top level. And um, I, 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 we saw Pronax at the bottom there. Mentally, what do you think he's thinking going into this now? Because I don't know if his team, you say they trust him unconditionally, but, and I don't want to labor the point, but has he, you know, are they thinking, well, yeah. you said we were going to win this, dude? Yeah. Um, I don't know if his, what his teammates are feeling like, but I know from a leading perspective that getting blanked in a half like that that really shakes your confidence in your own decisions because you know he went into that match feeling very confident yep. about his calls. He just saw NIP play Cobblestone three, four times this tournament. He's really confident in what they do on their CT sides and he knows counters to it. None of the counters worked. So how, what does that do to his psyche right now going into cash, which is a map that they're already weak at. So I really hope that he lets his players play with free reign here. I'd like to see Olaf Meister bust out the AWP with JW, maybe get a, like yeah. an auto sniper floating around Cash, because that's a really deadly gun to have on the CT side of Cash. And, and you know, and you segued without me even segueing. We're just going to switch seats here eventually. <laughs> uh, let's move forward. He's to, that good. Let's move forward to the next map. And you know, before we get into the breakdown of, of the, the players and the teams on the map, you know, I, I know that Valve obviously has get, gotten a lot of grief about you know the kind of push of these two new maps, Overpass and Cobblestone, into the into the scene, right? And they have very valid reasons why they're doing it, you know, but we, we kind of beat that all to death, you know, we're not necessarily fans of this, the, the timing of it um, without the maps being kind of tweaked for professional play. Yeah. Opposite side of the coin is the cash map has been worked through their system slowly but surely through the operation system yeah. and now has become an official, everybody who owns the game gets to play cash. And it's one of my favorite new maps. It is yeah. such a rock solid map. And obviously you get a guy like Volcano involved in a map, yeah. X huge pro in his own right, the cash guy as he's yeah. now called, right? Yeah, like, yeah. It's like you don't know who Sal was before <laughs> that. Shame on you, right? Yeah. Great guy. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about cash. Uh, you know, your thoughts on the map in general, and then as we break down into these two teams playing it. Like you said, it's an excellent map for competitive play. Um, the, the middle is crucial for both teams to hold. Gaining middle as a terrorist means you have full access to both sites, and CTs have very limited information. So the CTs generally play really heavy on the middle. Try to prevent the T's from an early take. Maybe later in the ha later in the rounds, you'll see them spread off of middle and play two and B, three and A. Maybe one in spawn instead of three and A. Um, the map is also really awesome for executes on A. So you may see like smokes over the A wall with terrorists wrapping around the site. It's really cool to see stuff like that. Terrace taking up the, we call it highway, but it's, good, it's from middle to the A site. Also, you could see Molotov strats in B using the window. So, I mean, the map is really open for anything. It's a fantastic map for competitive play, and I just really hope we can see some, some good strategy. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nip play this map a lot, and I, I've cast a, I cast a, a scan uh, invitational that they played in, where they pick cash pretty much every round, but they were losing to teams on it. <laughs> this is why I was like, 
was this really Nip's yeah. pick? Uh, they lost to a team called Online Bots, who are Estonian. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I do uh, remember uh, that. Uh, yeah. Estonian and, and Finnish mix, and I think they lost 16-4 on it, and I was like aghast. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, they got gamed on a map they didn't know. But then when I spoke to Nip after the game, they were like, no, 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 we play the map all the time. We're yeah. really good at it. And I was thinking, you weren't today, brother. No, so, yeah. it's crazy. It's epic. All of, all of the pro, pro level teams love cash because it's a sound map. There's just there's no holes in it. Um, it. It really is perfect as far as setups go, where you can play like two one two. There's that solid middle, solid A, solid B. Yep. Vent rotating to B. It's excellent. Classic layout, classic yeah. everything. You know. Exactly. But again, that being said, it's time. We're gonna go ahead and show that winning moment from Nip, and then we're gonna go right back to Anderson Semler for game two, grand finals. And Fu Flaren has really been stepping up his game here in the second half. He does miss the shot, but Forrest will not. Now it's a three-on-one, and ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be NIP taking the first map away from Fnatic here in the grand final at ESL 1 Cologne. What an upset. This is the map that Fnatic picked. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, and we get to see it all again. The win here on the first map for Nip. This is now, I mean, they are now the team to stop here. They are one map away from securing their first major title after two times in the finals. It ha I mean, Fnatic, how are they going to stop them here, Anders? I really don't know. I think uh, I think our analyst panel covered it really yeah, well. This has to be devastating. Losing that many rounds in a row, and Sean puts up a really good point. You know, Pronax is the guy responsible, and I guess in a way also Devil Walk. Losing that many rounds on the second half of the map that you picked is is it's got to be a confidence shattering. But Cash is a map that Fnatic definitely know. This isn't like one of the new maps like Overpass or Cobblestone that they may be a little bit shaky on. Mm -hmm. They know the map works. Uh, the question is if they know it better than NIP. I have a sneaky suspicion that Fnatic are going to come back swinging hard here. If they win the pistol round, I could see Fnatic going completely nuts. No doubt about it. And, I mean, Fnatic, they're, if there is one thing, they're just going to come out and you, you're right to say swinging because I think they need to shatter Nip early yes. on here. They really need to deal a huge blow to Nip's confidence right out the gates, right off the bat on this second map. Not let Nip just carry that momentum over from the first map. But I was talking to Get Right during the break. We were outside and, you know, obviously he's like, it's not over yet, man. It's not yet over. But we'll show you some tricks. So he's looking at me dead in the eyes, like, we'll show you some tricks on cash. Well, look, um, that kind of mentality is actually really important because we were talking about it during that, uh, during that second half on uh, Cobblestone when they were jumping down in the middle and they actually almost lost that round. So for Get Right to assume, um, you know, that kind of mentality and say, all right, it isn't over till it's over because if they start pretending that they've already won, that's exactly when Fnatic get an opening oh, back yeah. into it. So that can they can't really afford that at all. They gotta keep their heads in the game. And obviously they've been playing for such a long time that there's no way they don't know this already. Of course. I mean, we're talking about, well, seen as the most consistent, the best team in the world, NIP, versus a major champion, championship title holding team right here. And Pronax, you know, everybody's talking about how his leadership has led one team to the title. Now he's here again in the finals. These guys know exactly what they have to do. These guys know that it's not over until you see that 16-0 on the scoreboard, until you see that you have got all the rounds and you can stand up and just go crazy. But the crowd here is so hype. The Get Pro 90 is right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, can we give a cheer for Fnatic? If you want to see that third map here in the Grand Finals, then clap for them. They do need some support right here. Oh, yeah. Not a lot of Fnatic fans in the in the audience right here, it seems. I'm having flashbacks of DreamHack Winter. Yeah, that Vox, was actually Vox true. Vox or led the cheer section for Fnatic, but it wasn't the big one. Everybody there was cheering for Nip. So let's go ahead and see who here wants to see Nip take this second map in the Grand Finals. All right, a lot more. A lot more of a presence here for the NIP team. No, oh, and Titan, you're still best. Now, what's really interesting is we do have two Swedish teams. In the last one, we had a French and a Swedish team playing semi-finals, grand finals here at, um, in, in Cologne in Germany. And people were stacked up all over the, the scene. People wanted to watch. There's so many people outside that they can't actually fit inside where we have the seating area. Mm -hmm. What happens if uh, if we could get a top German team? That's what I want. And I would love to see that one day. That would be amazing. But that's but this is also why this land right here, this major championship, is so important because really you can make the claim to being the best team in the world if you take it. There is none of that uh, that home crowd support, right? Because look at look at DreamHack Winter in Sweden at DreamHack, two Swedish teams in the finals. Everybody's going crazy, but the crowd is incredibly hyped for Nip. 
in Katowice, Poland, when Virtus Pro took it. The entire crowd is constantly chanting VP, VP, VP. Here in Germany, at Gamescom, there is no German team. No, but it is a Swed it's two Swedish teams here battling it out. Yeah, and the audience is still here for it. That's what's so cool about this whole situation. So that's what I'm saying is, if we could get a German team in here, that'd be even better for it right now. Do He's we have spot down in front? Having so, a snack with Edward. And with Edward, I mean the man with the beard, the godlike beard. And he Pansy all the way to the right, too. Pansy's here in steel as well, and they went on a muffin run, actually, uh, during the break. So they're well equipped for this second half. They're going to keep their energy up to keep those cheers going. But everybody, what is it, Dorp? Drop? Oh, there it is. It's Drop. That's right. Drops in the chat, but also drops in the uh, on the stream here. If you're tuning in live in GoTV or on Twitch, make sure that you connect your Twitch account to your Steam account because there are items that do drop while watching, and they have the cool stickers on it. All the Katowice, or not all the Katowice, obviously, but the Gamescom stickers plastered on those skins, and they are quite cool. Carlton has made it here as well. All right, guys, in the audience, now is the time. This is the Grand Finals. The League of Legends stage is pretty far away, but let's see if we can make them hear us. Are you ready? A one, two, three. Let's give a cheer here for Global Offensive. Let's go. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. I'm sure they heard it. Now, we did challenge the League of Legends community, and I'm actually really pleased because they took it so well. It was actually on the top of the, of the League of Legends uh, subreddit, yeah. and uh, a lot of people were saying, look, I've never watched any Counter-Strike, but I tuned in because of this thread, and now we're just having fun watching it. So maybe there is potential for some sort of synergy between the two communities. That'd be good fun. And we do have, obviously, a ton of new people who are joining our community, so a big welcome to all of you. If you've never been watching Counter-Strike before, then you've joined at the perfect time. All right, well, be sure to spread the word, guys. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we will be here for our second map of the Grand Finals between Ninjas in Pajamas and Fnatic here at Gamescom. really been stepping up his game here in the second half. He does miss the shot, but Forrest will not. Now it's a three-on-one, and ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be NIP taking the first map away from Fnatic here in the grand final at ESL 1 Cologne. What an upset. This is the map that Fnatic picked. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. For after that short break, we should be getting into it any moment now. But this already has been a terrific first map between Nip and Fnatic. They've already shown us just what they're capable of here. Nip with the perfect second half on their CT side. Fnatic never really finding a way to get back into that game. We have to see if they can recover here on Cash, which will be our second map, but a map both of these teams are extremely familiar with. They know all the ins and outs, Anders. They definitely do. NIP ended up picking this map out for the Fnatic, picked Cobblestone and lost on it. And the thing is, there is no guarantee that just because you picked a map, they're gonna, you're going to win it. So NIP, they can't feel too confident. That's what we ended up talking about before the break as well. But I am curious about how Fnatic are going to deal with everything here. They certainly have the players for it. They certainly have the minds for it as well. Question is if NIP have just a little bit more and they're going to be able to make it here for the third time. Is that momentum going to carry over here onto that second map? I think that is the thing here. But Pronax is certainly the type of leader who will say, okay, I went, uh, you know, we, we thought we had an edge. I went for a bit of a gamble, took a map that I knew exactly, what, or at least I thought I knew exactly what Nip were going to be doing on. It didn't pan out, but we still have two opportunities to take this title. This is a best of three format here. So the next map will be Cash, and we should be getting into it just a moment's time. The pistol is about to begin, and Fnatic will be starting on the CT side here on the defense. Nip starting T side once again. This is, if played correctly, supposed to be a counter terrorist map. Not hugely, not like Nuke, where you can expect to win 12 or 13 rounds or something like that, but still, you should win the majority and preferably be about nine. So that's what we're looking for here. Mid control is absolutely important on cash right now. And Fnatic here are going for a bit of a gamble as they do put four people inside that A bomb site, just waiting. And it's a single person over at B right now, so the, the gamble is pretty is pretty huge here for Fnatic. Once again, just like with map picks, they're gonna go for it. And now Olaf Meister goes down, and is that the opening for NIP? Instant headshot, JW pushes in, Krims goes down, Fiflaren with the shot, JW one bullet left, he doesn't connect, and he's gonna go down. NIP now rushing into the bomb site and Pronax in the back here. He's going to be Molotov out of position. He's in the middle of everything. No cover. He drops Fiflaren, picks up the double kill, and now Flusher one on four here. Bomb plant delayed for a second, but what can he possibly do? 
Oh, this is so tough for him now. He's going to eat nade damage as well. Drop down to 30 HP. He's been spotted. They know exactly where he is. Forrest already putting shots through that smoke. He walks right into Freiburg, and the headshot is there. Get right raises his hands. But you have to admire how it, how it works out in that pistol round right there. Fnatic going for an aggressive play. And as we said, they needed to destabilize Nip early. They needed to shake their confidence. And that was exactly what that strap was designed to do. Get up in their face early on at A main. Get those kills early on. But Nip, they had two guys camping right outside his squeak door. They heard Fnatic coming, and that allowed them to rotate in and completely counter them. Fnatic going for a huge left hook and knockout blow to NIP, and they lean right into a, to a right there. That's going to be taking them really down a couple of notches here. They do pick up a scout and also, of course, CSET 75s and body head armor. Interestingly enough, it's Crims who's going to be using this scout. Now, we've seen Crims uh, use scope rifles in the past throughout these playoffs matches, and he has had excellent results as well. So, him having the scout, not that big of a surprise, actually. We'll see if he's going to be able to actually put it to use here, seeing how it's such a powerful gun. But Olaf Meister, in the meantime, manages to get the, get the drop on Freiburg, and that's the CZ-75 going to work once again. An NIP generally haven't been very good at managing the anti eco rounds like a lot of teams in this tournament haven't so this early loss here is uh, is maybe going to affect them they steal the galil as well here olofmeister now with galil armor and grenade not at all bad to start off with here in the second round there's a body shot coming in as well crims can he get another one here looking for the angle and he's got cover and flusher here c set 75 in hand the timing is going to be everything flusher waiting patiently and the patient pays off he's going to pick up the one and launch out of bullets but it might be enough anyway crims inside has already picked up a couple of body shots and he needs just one more here jumps to find get right there's jw and get right alone a great second round from fanatic already get right about to get caught as well the flank is real he's gonna have a man closing in behind him that's olaf meister already using that galil that he picked up earlier and get right gets the headshot first unreal but there's only eight seconds left on this clock get right cannot get anything done past this point decides to run and save his gear and that is definitely the right decision to make in this situation 1v3 now you have to admire Crims and his self-control there going into that round because he gets the information, he spots the man out, tags him, but then instead of actually going for a repeek, instead of giving Nip a chance to find the shot on him, he backs off to that site, feeds the information to his teammates, and sets it up for Flusher to get the perfect flank on Nip. So Fnatic definitely keeping their, their cool here. They deserved to get that second round after plays like that. Very, very nicely done. This is a map that shares something in common with a map like Nuke, where in the anti-eco, it's really hard for you not to get close to the pistols that the CTs have picked up. You have to, to get within pistol range, so maybe NIP needs to come up with a different answer once, uh, once they get into that position. If they do get into that position again, grenades are going to rain in here, and it's Pronax holding, and he's actually very much alone. These grenades are so good for NIP. Pronax goes down, the backup's going to have some trouble. They charge right through the smoke. They're not going to be waiting. Now Fnatic have a great presence on this uh, bomb site, but Freiburg in the double headshot, get right with the kill on Pronax, and the bomb site is lost. The bomb site is gone. Great nade there from Crims. He still has that scout in hand. If he can tag both two members here for Nip are fairly low, but they have to play it safe. And he's waiting for his teammate Flush out to rotate in from short. This is going to be the split play here from Fnatic, trying to get an edge on Nip, but the peg stab is already under effect. Get right, get right is right behind them, and there is no way out now for Fnatic. They are boxed in, and the last thing they're going to expect is the peg stab from Get Right. Works perfectly. Crims will rotate rotate around and managed to pick up a gun and this could be pretty big here if he gets another kill that would be great but it's not gonna ma happen and he gets boxed I mean he gets boxed in and CT spawn so nip strike right back in the third round come out swinging and take it away from Fnatic and the question is and this is what I was wondering are they gonna go for this really dangerous pattern where they try and force it up again so they will actually do that and that's something that could really have a big effect we've seen this earlier in the tournament that at least two or three times already where a team just decides to keep forcing for a long time and if it eventually pays off if Fnatic get a round off of this then it's all worth it if they don't they could end up double ecoing exactly but if they, I mean, if, if they're in that kind of situation right now where they want to even out their money, if they're gonna, if three of them have to double eco anyway, definitely a strong play here from Fnatic. And we've seen how lethal these pistols can be. 5-7 on Pronex, but he really is an exception to the rule. Olaf Meister and Flush are going for the CZs, and two rifles picked up. Now we have to see if Fnatic this time can land the shots, because Nip, they're here to party, they're here to play, and they're about to take over. <laughs> Palm sight, A, hey, there's Olaf Meister gets one, but it's only the one. Still getting the information, feeding it back to his teammates. Pronex still alive with the 5-7, picks up Florin, and he could get a second, but Forest will shut him down. 
Fnatic really staying alive for a long time here, allowing more time for JW to get in. So that's a really good job from all of Meister and Pronax then. Flush is walking up from behind as well. This could be really great. JW does go down. They're already shooting at that wall here. He's going to take the peak and Exist is ready for it, but get right in. It's just on very low on health. Fnatic could definitely take this round, and that would be such a great performance if they could. Cream is missing a shot with the scout. Missing once more. That's two really vital miss now. Flusher is not going to miss. He takes down Get Right. Bomb will be planted here, but Exist. This is a really terrible one on two for him. A single bullet, and he's going to be gone. Uh, but a single bullet from him will take out either of these members as well. If he can land the shot, we have to see. He knows that there's a man in A main, and that is going to be the flank coming in here from Flusher. Crims is waiting on short with that scout as well. Exist bomb. Boxed in very thoroughly here by Fnatic, and he tries to turn around. He tries to bait out a reaction from Flusha, but Flusha is just too quick. And now the defuse is coming in. Five seconds left, and they will have ample time. Fnatic, I mean, this is so back and forth, Anders. This has turned into a real brawl here at the beginning of the half. The momentum is crucial for both of these teams, and neither one of them is going to turn away in this game of chicken. And NIP have enough to actually buy three on three players. I'd be shocked if they don't, and they will indeed pick it up. In fact, Exist has so much money, he's going to buy a little drop it to a friend. So now they have four rifles on this team, and that's the bomb plant that made they could do that. If Exist hadn't got the bomb down that previous round, they would have been a full on eco for NIP. So we're in the fifth round here of the first half of the second map here ESL1 Cologne, and now. It gets interesting again. Fnatic got to win this. Forrest looking for a kill in the middle. Look how aggressive and confident he is. Charging in with the AK-47 in hand. And he's got a lot of uh, information already. Pronax, though, will pick up the opening kill on Freiburg. Uh, it's going to slow Nip down somewhat here, but Forrest is in a position to be able to catch a man off guard if they get too greedy. Crims goes for the spray down, but Fiflorin gets the best of him. And now Flusha has to chuck in the incendiary to slow things down. He can't let Nip speed up behind this. Forrest, unfortunately, does not find the kill on Wolfmeister, and the, lead, the line holds for Fnatic. They maintain the man advantage. And Nip, they still have needs to work with here, though. So they can still make something happen for themselves if Fnatic give them the opportunity, but I really do love this play from Fnatic. Olaf Meister could just completely rock them, but no Exist is waiting on the other side. Not fooled, and he could get the second frag, but JW's too quick. He definitely should have got that second frag. That was a big mistake from Exist. He could have just walked casually and then got that one. So maybe a little bit of a nerve coming into play then, but that was a, almost 100% kill there. If you flare in and get right now, two on three, and Flusher, Waiting inside this bomb site. 30 seconds left. And um, this is going to be really tough, especially because Fnatic's actually already making a rotation. So NIP have got to move very quickly here. And Flusher smartly waiting, not peeking, just really good play. He's going to pick up the headshot here on through Flaren. And now it's a one on three for Get Right. Flusher will take him down. Solid play from uh, from this counter side. Yeah, very patient play. And there's the, there's the tap from Devil Walk on the shoulder, making but sure that these guys are definitely. I actually Ready. think that if Exista picked up that kill in the middle, that would have been an IP winning the well, round right then and there. Absolutely, that was a crucial frag from JW in managing to crouch and spray and actually find the kill on Exist. And I think you're all right. I think Exist did rush it a little bit there. Had he walked up, it would have been perfect. But Exist, of course, doesn't want to let the man that just boosted someone get away either. If JW was running, he could have got around into sandbags, and then it gets, uh, it gets a bit tricky there. That's the way that it happens, or that it plays out this time, though. Nip are on pistol now, however, and they actually just have to deal some damage to Fnatic. They cannot let Fnatic's economy get out of control. And Fnatic certainly don't have much in the bank right now, so it's crucial for Fnatic to just have a perfect hold. But I like, I actually like that Freiburg is going for a bit of a swag over there at Squeak Door. Open, close, open, close, draw the attention there. Yeah, Swag's variation of that play, actually, which is interesting, is to, to play with the door a little bit and then start shooting through it, mm -hmm. hoping someone's going to peek. So something that Freiburg didn't do in that situation, but you're right, Swag from I buy Power is, I think, one of the best players in the world at playing that, that squeak door Absolutely. on cash. So if you ever want to learn a little bit, he's a really good guy to watch for it. Well, you've seen him single-handedly wreck teams from that position. Teams having to put three guys on A just to deal with him than the pressure that he's putting out. But now it begins. Snip going for the double boost into mid. JW calmly clicking them away, however, with the help of Crims. But JW, yet another one. This is just a series of frags. JW wants to pad his stats. He's got four, and Freiburg already wrapping around, looking to get the flank, but Flusha, he's got his mates back. No way in for Nip in that round, and they actually don't accomplish much at all apart from, well, padding Fnatic's coffers, and that is definitely not part of the plan here for Nip. Fnatic, it seems like they won the game of Chicken Anders. They've stabilized here. They have, and that's very, very important. That looked like it was going to be a knockout blow to them when they lost that first pistol round, but they, mm -hmm. they kept their heads in the game, and somehow they 
they got back in it. So that's really impressive. Shows a lot about the, the strength of character that's on this team. We're moving into the seventh round, and I like to see NIP try and go for something that's a little bit more aggressive, maybe. What I would love to see them do is a big crunch on the B bomb site, where they actually go for this event where Flusher is, smoke off the middle so the people in the middle can't help out, and then try and just rush into checkered and B bomb site quick. I think that something really snappy here could work out great for, uh, for the Swedish ninjas. And they're actually doubling up over here as well, Fnatic, really putting a lot of focus on mid, but this really has been the focal point so far in this match. Bit of the wall bang there from Pronax trying to tag up Freiburg. Freiburg looking for him as well, but nothing has been done apart from giving away the information as to where people are on this map for now. There's still a minute left on this clock, however, so Nip, plenty of time. I mean, we can see just how spread out they are right now, really trying to cover all of the angles because Fnatic can push. Fnatic can try and get out there and get that info. And Nip, they would be more than happy to uh, get the advantage by getting that frag and the punish. Yeah, Flusher actually getting a Molotov back, and they were waiting for him as he dropped out of the vent. So a tiny trick there from NIP. If they had wielded a, a kill off of that, that would have been perfect. But as it is, they've just wasted a lot of time, and now 30 seconds left, and Fnatic still holding their ground. So, got to give some credit here to the CT side, making sure that they don't really do anything at all. And they've uh, got a pretty heavy presence here at the B-bomb side. NIP are going to go for it with just 20 seconds left. This is going to be flawless. It's going to happen, but JW already taken down one. They're pushing up through Flower and get right, getting some good kills in, and the bomb is going to go down. And look at NIP's full post plant positions here. They're so good. Moving out of the bomb side, leaving one guy in. It's exactly what you want to play this like. Fnatic now have to look all over the place to give up, get the kills before they can actually defuse this bomb. Pronax is waiting right here, and he's going to be flashing in once. Can he get Exist down? He's playing a mind game here. Get right goes down by the playground. Pronax looking for it, but he goes down. Exist with a great headshot through the wall. Then Olofmeister comes in to take care of him, but now this bomb is already far ticked. They have the kid on Olofmeister, but Flaren is holding, but he's not going to be holding long enough. And they can get the defuse. So a really good retake here. It's very close, but Fnatic they will be able to win the round. And that was that was actually a mistake there by Fiflar, and really managing to turn that into a three-on-three -three situation. We can see, I mean, the happiness on Olfmeister's face after that play. Pronax as well. They are definitely getting confident here in this CT half for them. But at the end of the at the end of the play, Nip, they had the three-on-three, -three, they had the after plant positions, and honestly, if Fiflar waits one more second there before peeking out. Yeah. One more second before peeking out, he, they have that round. Fnatic don't have the time for the defuse. So that may be uh, true, again, but the problem, the, is, the problem is he doesn't know if someone's flanking him from, the, from his left-hand side. So if he, does, if he stays behind the box, they're going to become running up. The big issue, the, really, the thing that really screwed that round was actually Gerai going down by the playground. He should have been able to, to do more from that position, I think. I mean, right now, Fnatic have really just got all of the momentum going their way. I think that's the most important thing here. And when, when a team of this caliber starts to really feel confident in their shots and their abilities, their calls, it's when Nip really start to struggle. So this is going to be all about now the picks because Nip, they get the plant, so they're able to actually go for a pretty reasonable buy, but limited nades to work with. No HEs, only one flash. At least they have the smokes. So we have to see if they can find anybody peeking. But you have to you have to actually admire Fnatic's patience in these rounds on their CT side. They're giving so little room for Nip to work in as far as actually picking up entry frags that would allow Nip to speed up behind it. And this is exactly the style designed to counter Nip because Nip are a team that thrive off of entries. Once they get that first frag, they're incredibly good at speeding up behind it and overtaking a site. Fnatic playing so passively, so patiently means that Nip have to come to them and things like this happen. JW forces out the error and manages to catch Forrest with that AWP. And Crims are going to pick up a good kill here on Fiflaren, and this is not working out at all for the terrorist side. Just getting picked off one at a time. Really good defense from Fnatic. And now we're talking about five rounds in a row on the CT side of Cash here. Now, NIP picked this map, and I'm wondering where are some of those cool terrorist side strats that we do see on this map. There are a lot of different stuff you can do here. Boost in the middle we've already seen, but um, like I was talking about earlier, there are some really cool rushes you can do to the B-bomb side too that could work out. And even just trying to take more mid control, NIP have been very passive in the middle, <laughs> apart from those boosts. Well, they have four flashes and two smokes right now, and it seems like they are kind of heading over towards A. Are they going to go for a bit of a mixed boost? It seems like the first three are going to be going into A main, two into Squeak, and Nip, they definitely want to get out here fairly quickly. I like how they wait already to see if they can get a punish on anybody pushing in here by Fnatic early on, but now Nip gather, and this is going to be the tank of tanks. Can Nip land the shots? The Molly's going to go down from Wolfmeister. That's going to get pretty hot in there fairly soon here for Nip, but they have to go charging through. They're actually running out of time here. The rotation will be coming in from Fnatic. The key, the crucial kills have to come through, and so far, Fnatic are lighting them up. Nip, only one kill going their way. 
Yeah, oh, and a second one for Flaren. These pistols are doing something good here for, for NIP. They've already got two kills. Picking up one more would be great, but it's not going to work out. JW makes sure it stays at just the two. Still fairly successfully, Karan, I would say, for NIP. Investing in a couple of grenades and coming away with two kills. The bomb plant would have been great, and I think those smokes were meant to, to try and secure a bomb plant. Doesn't work out so well. Ten rounds in, and um, now it's a unit double up set up for, uh, for, for Fnatic here. JW and all of Meister both. Now I, I'd love to see NIP make a change, and I think they will. These three Molotovs they have tells me it could very well be an A push coming out here. I, it, I mean, they can cover quite a bit of ground with that. You usually use it to check the corner around Squeak, or behind quad boxes at the back corner of the site. Molotovs are very useful for taking over that A site, but they can be useful for basically starting the burning ring of fire on B side as well and forcing the defenders off of that bomb site and really opening it up. Freiburg has the molly in hand there, but they aren't really going to be doing too much with it. What I really like from Fnatic here is that this double op play just shuts down practically half of the map. JW and Olaf Meister both terrors with these rifles. Look at this, this Molotov is going to fake the vent, so this is going to pretend, they're pretending right now that it's a B push. Try and force back Crims, he will force back, and that's what they did last time, they did a B. Unfortunately for them, Flusher picks up the kill in the middle on Forest, so now maybe Fnatic are going to realize, in fact they will realize they're already rotating up. And it's a 4 on 5 right here, Olaf Meister in the back by the quad boxes, a lot of fire, but no real action from NIP, and Fnatic are in such good positions, I don't see this working out at all. Flusher, easy kill on Freiburg, goes for the kill and squeak as well, but if Flaren exists, they do return a little bit here. Olof Meister sees set 75 to the face and it's a quick double for Olof. Very, very cool play. Now get right in a one-on-two with 30 seconds. He's going to go for the plant if he can. Be hugely important if he can put this bomb down. He's got 25 seconds. Can he make it a one-on-one? -on -one? Not quite. JW. That was so close by Get Right. That was so close. That was a pixel off right there. JW strikes faster, however. And that is going to be yet another round going towards Fnatic. Eight rounds now on the board for them. Two only here for Nip. And this is really when Nip starts to feel the pressure. I think they need at least five rounds on this half to feel confident with their performance in this first half on their T side. And they, I mean, with how difficult it is for them to be able to get onto these sites, and for them to deal with how Fnatic are playing this right now, those three rounds, that, that's a lot to ask, I feel. So, Nip, again, going to be able to go for a buy. Get right, in fact, going for that AWP on the Ninja's side. And we saw how effective that was. He had a, very, a couple very strong rounds on Cobble. We have to see if he can pull it on here, off here on Cash. JW already waiting around the angle. And this could be brutal. It will be brutal. It's a headshot, no less, on to Get right. I do actually still love the idea, but you're, you're challenging Get Right also JW and all of mine, so it's going to be difficult. That's a great long distance headshot there from Forrest. Then a second one picked up. Now it's time for Forrest. He's angry, tired of losing rounds. They've lost five in a row, or even more than that, actually. Seven in a row is what they're up to now, so they want to see if they can bring it back. He's trying to make it happen here. They've got the man advantage now. He needs to play it patiently. He still has two nades on him. That can help take a sight, but he's off on a mission. He's trying to sow confusion in the ranks. Fnatic already with the setup, however. Olaf Meister putting that AWP to use. He's been smoked off from CT now, however, so he has to actually try and work his way through. JW looking from on high. It's a double op hold, and Fnatic need to land the shots. It's absolutely crucial. Look at who's coming up from behind. If they get this bomb down, there's a backstab. In effect, Olaf Meister goes down. It's a two on three. He misses the shot. They are being crunched in. Fnatic They've got to commit right now and get the kills. JW trapped, but he, he's going to go down Forrest with the triple kill. Perfect movement from Forrest. The first two headshots were great, but the decision to trust his teammates to get into that bomb site and then backstab Fnatic, that was very, very cool. And these are the kinds of plays that Nip are capable of because of that trust, because of the ability of everybody on this team to step up when it's necessary and land the key frags. Nip sneaking below heaven as well, predicting where JW would be watching from and then managing to get on that side to get the plant. Very well played there by the Ninjas. Fnatic, despite their best efforts, couldn't hold them back. But now we have to see Fnatic bounce back. They have plenty of money to re equipped with Ops, and Olaf Meister already picking off in Florida and gets the second frag. Get right is out of it, and Fnatic right back into the mix. Two kills and a huge advantage going into this round. Three on five, trying to challenge Olaf Meister again, turning out to be a really bad idea for NIP. And actually, Fnatic, well, I mean, NIP don't really have enough money to buy an extra round. They might force it up anyway, just trying to see if they can get up to five. But if NIP could end up winning this round, Fnatic would have two players that wouldn't be able to buy. So there's really a lot riding on this one round for both teams. 
But it looks like Fnatic are stabilizing, and again, they're making great decisions on where to actually hold. They, they seem to really read what NIP are doing quite well. Now, this is the difference between uh, one of the newer maps and one of the older maps that these teams have so much experience on. Both of them, in fact. And now we can see that effect having here for Olaf Meister missing his third shot. However, he's still alive and on this site. And as long as that, as that remains the case, it's going to be tough. But the flank comes in for Grips. He's going to get two kills. And we're into a three-on-one. Forrest stuck and checkered. Nowhere out. No way to get out of that room. Flush up with the flank. Will obliterate Nip. And now, now we look at a very tough decision here for Nip. Do they decide to eco and bank it all on the 14th round? Or do they decide to force up here? It would be amazing if they did that. Yeah. They have to go for pistols and nays here and really just put it all in that 14th round. Yeah, forcing it would mean one rifle essentially and then CZs on everyone else and that's a little bit more than they're willing to invest into it. Especially because if they did that, we could be seeing a 12-3 first half here for, for Fnatic. So NIP gambling on 10-5 instead of anything else. NIP, once again, is really spreading out across this map as well. Trying to see if Fnatic are going to get greedy. We haven't really seen that from Fnatic, however. JW is actually taking a little bit more of a peak than usual. Really looking to see if he can't get ahead of Nip, but it's going to be Crims with an insane flick shot. What a headshot on Forrest. Very nice reactions there displayed by Crims, and we've been seeing terrific play from him throughout the entire tournament. Him and Olafmeister both are big parts of why Fnatic are this far in the tournament now. JW seems to be almost unstoppable in this position. I wish they would actually figure out a way to deal with this. They they can grenade this spot, and Freiburg's going to use a pistol instead to get rid of him. So that's a really important kill, just trying to stop JW. Pronax caught with the grenade out, could have easily gone down then. That was very, very close. And is he going to check the corner? Freiburg is right there by the forklift. Pronax, very quick, swift reaction here. And now get right, it's just a matter of time. Grenade reigns in, and it's actually going to be Flusher with the rifle to pick him off. So nicely done. Eco round from NIP, so they didn't really accomplish much more than the one kill here. But I wish they could figure out a way to deal with JW in that corner, because that seems to be a place he's just holding for a number of rounds. And once it becomes too predictable, NIP should react to it. I think NIP really, like, it's past time that they really try and change up their style here because they're still looking for the pick play, but Fnatic are doing such a good job of playing passively, holding so far back that Nip really can't find the kills. It's really slowing up Nip and forcing them to go for these plays with 30 seconds left on the clock, and that's not enough time. I would love to see a very quick play out of Nip. Try and change up the pace. Go for an A rush. Go for a B rush. Get in Fnatic's face early on here in these halves. Krim's already setting up to catch the man, setting up for a play. Get right. Takes a bullet, but is actually going to be able to live. A little bit of damage exchanged, but nothing more comes of it. And NIP, they're very determined to go to this speed bomb side. And Fnatic, they're very determined to have three people here. It's a really good opening for Get Right. Picks up the one kill here. All of Meister covering. He's been so deadly with this AWP. And he's going to miss the next shot here. Got to be careful he doesn't get smoked off. And there is, in fact, the smoke for NIP. Now it's on Flusher to try and keep a count on how many people are down here. They throw some grenades up, trying to see if they can make the safe cross. But it's not safe when Flusher is watching. Takes down for Flaren. And more grenades to follow. Flusher eventually goes down to Freiburg. And now it's a three on four bomb is being planted here but now nip are almost all stuck inside the bomb site with the exception of forest see if he can actually make the difference i definitely think he can last time he did except for a different angle that's also going to be confusing for Fnatic. they do have plenty of kits and even a smoke here to try and prevent one access route back in from forest flashbangs rain in but now it is a go they're going to go for the retake here and it's a two on one jw landing a shot through the smoke not going to get it he's going to go down to forest again it is Patrick to come up from behind to save NIP. Yeah, getting that entry again, crucial there for Nip, and we can see what happens. That's the thing. They find that frag, and then they instantly start applying pressure to the site, speeding things up, forcing the rotation out of Fnatic, but also just knowing how to deal with it. Ulfmeister missing that shot initially, and Nip taking advantage to smoke him off and get things rolling. So, once again, Nip, in a round that they cannot afford to lose, they need that fifth round desperately going into this second half. It is a bit CT side, and we see that Fnatic definitely demonstrating that uh, with a strong defense, it's very tough for the T side to get in here. But for now at least, Nip once again just sneaking around. Not exactly spread out so far, and now I really love to see it. Are they actually going to manage to get in here quickly and find that opening frag? 
And they try and flash JW, almost works, but he's still in the back here, jumping back to take a safer position. Pronax by the forklift, goes down, exists with the opening. JW now, this AW is not good at this range, but he still picks up a grenade. Another kill, a quick triple, JW crushing NIP in this bomb side, just long enough for the backup to come in. Now get right, it's in a one on four. That is such a huge save from JW, and he gets the final one. The four kill comes up, Fnatic 11 4. What a beautiful first half for them. Uh, JW been styling there at the end with the HE kill at the same time as the AWP kill. Two birds, well, with two stones, but hey, it works. JW really locking down that site, and that's what made it possible there for Fnatic. With Exist getting the entry onto it by a forklift as well, really thought that that was going to go Nip's way. It was absolutely crucial that JW hold that position on the map and allow for Flusher to rotate in to support him. But right now, we're going to have both of these teams essentially talking it over, trying to figure out exactly what they have planned for us here. And I think a lot of that is going to be happening on Fnatic's side right now. Because if they can pick up this pistol round on the T side, the amount of pressure that's going to be on Nip going into the beginning of the second half is going to be monstrous. Fnatic could just run away with the game right here and take this to the third map, which is Inferno. Yeah, like we started off saying, this is a CT-sided map, but not like Nuke or anything else. So getting 11 rounds is very, very impressive. And I'd say winning the pistol round basically does give the map to Fnatic, unless NIP just go completely nuts. But I think even for NIP, this comeback would be too much to handle. At that point, you'd be at a 14-4 at a scoreline, and you should be able to win it even being on the CT, on the terrorist side here. And we'll have to find out, of course, we are just waiting about 40 seconds left. If you're just joining us, then a big welcome here to the stream. This is ESL 1 Cologne 2014 at Gamescom, the third major tournament in the Counter-Strike Global Offensive Series. The first one went to Fnatic, and they're back in the Grand Finals. The second one here, that went to uh, Virtus Pro in Katowice. That was also an ESL event, and now we have the third one coming up here with a, a rematch of the DreamHack Winter uh, Major. Uh, really, amazing. really impressive stuff coming up and I hope you guys are enjoying it hashtag ESL one on Twitter if you want to chime in and invite your friends now is now's the perfect time to get friends involved in Counter-Strike oh absolutely I mean we're a big shout out to the league community for tuning in as well as all the others this is the match to watch it's two Titans clashing here in the grand finals a rematch as you said from DreamHack winter but Fnatic and Nip they go way back and this is huge now getting into the second half here it is going to be a change of sides Fnatic now on the offense Nip on the defense and now now the question is, can Nip secure this pistol round and give themselves a fighting chance in this second half? Or do Nuke Fnatic just railroad them and take it to map three? We find out now, and what exactly do Fnatic have in store for us here? That's the question. Pronax the mastermind, keeping quiet during the beginning or uh, during that break, not talking too much. So it really does seem like Fnatic, they've thought this out, they know what to do. Yeah, they already have the solution. It worked in the first half, it's going to work in the second half. Great smokes coming up in the middle, and they're going to charge in. And this is what I wanted NIP to do. That's what I was talking about, quick rush into the vents, but they are going to actually fake it out here. JW is just pretending while the rest of Fnatic are seriously committed to taking this A-bomb side, and there's only the, the two people holding here. They're going to be charging in. All of Meister goes instantly down, exists with a blinding headshot. He's going to get killed by Crimson anyway. Forrest picks up one and then goes down. A lot of trading, and get right. He's going to try and see if he can put an end to it. A bomb plant already. That's the first thing accomplished here from Fnatic and now Crimson Pronax trying to hold it. NIP do have a kit and they even have a grenade here. Now the question is where do they place this grenade? The HE goes raining in and Pronax and Crim still alive and intact. One of them blind and now Nip take advantage of that to start pushing in, applying the pressure. Pronax in a key position. The, the crossfire could be brutal. Crim's alive still and this is forcing Nip out into the open. Crim's with two headshots and this is the third. Pronax will tomb them and Fnatic take the second pistol. This is now a brutal turnaround. Nip, this is their map to boot and nothing is going their way. It really feels like it isn't at this point. 17 rounds, and it's a 12 to 4 scoreline. This could very quickly turn into an inferno map for the third in, an over, in the grand finals. That would, be, that would be pretty much an ideal situation for everyone watching. Oh, that would be a thing of beauty. We have to go the distance. It has to be settled on the third map, 16 14. That's what we all want. We want it to go all the way. But Fnatic now. Going for the boost up into mid. Nobody here, though, for Nip. This is just Nip going for a stack, about as clean as you can get. 3-2, really counting on the CZs to work the angles and hold these sights. 
Fnatic getting so excited that they actually forgot the bomb in, inside the, the T spawn. They're so excited to win this game and move on that they, they just they don't even want to put the bomb down. They just want to kill NIP members and see if they can pull a little way home. And that's not a bad strategy, I say. That's That seems like that's the reasonable plan for right, right about now for, uh, for Fnatic. Uh, and Fnatic actually with a healthy mix of SMGs on their side as well. Flusher going for that MP7, which he has been favoring in recent matches. And Olofmeister with the Pro 90. So they no Kevlar on Nip means these weapons can shred them instantly. So we have to see if Fnatic can actually line up the shots. Olofmeister goes running in and takes Freiburg out instantly. And now it's going to be the man falling back onto this side for Florin. Has to hold the angle and he gets the drop on Olofmeister. Manages to pick up the gun. Nicely done from Viflaren, and steals the, the, the P90 as well, which is kind of cool, but it would be even better if they could somehow get this P90 over to exist, because he's actually the only one who has body and head armor here, but he's all the way on the other side of the map. It's a really good shot from JW, Gerard goes down, and even with the P90, Viflaren can't hold this bomb sight. 50 bullets is a lot, but not enough to deal with every single member of Fnatic coming in, so he's going to go down as the MP7 from Flusher seals it. Yeah, 600 bucks in Flusher's pocket, he's going to be pleased with that. That's the whole purpose of that gun, Forrest Combley clicks Scrims away though at long range and now it's exist and Forrest alive. Scratch that, make it exist in a 1v3, just looking to do damage. He needs to find another frag and that would be terrific here for Nip. They've already got two in this eco round. If he can get three, that's so much money that Fnatic have to spend. And exist goes for the fight, but Flusha and Pronax team up on him and Fnatic managed to stay alive. 12 rounds, three members surviving and that's kind of a mixed way. Nip, that's that, they can consider that a win. So right, it was so right. There's actually something I hadn't noticed in that last round, which was that by the time they killed Fifi Flaring, there's about nine seconds left. So a moment of terror. If if the bomb planter dies or the, the bomb carrier dies to to Fiflaren there, that's actually a little bit scary. Fnatic cutting it close that round, but it, it turned out fine for them. And now they're only three rounds away from making this a 1-1 scoreline and moving on to Inferno as the third and deciding map of the Grand Finals. Wow, this is all on Nip at this point. And once again, they go full CZs. They really are going to have to go for that 14th line, building the wall now and hoping that Fnatic won't be able to pound their way through. 13 rounds for Fnatic means once they take this round, they only need two to secure the win and move on to map three. But once again, Fnatic, I really do actually like the setup here from Fnatic. Three guys in mid, one you know, towards A, one towards B, making sure that Nip can't get cheeky and peek out anywhere, start pressing for information. Nip will hear those nades go off mid, and we do have a bit of a rotation coming through, but again, it's just holding on the sights right now, Nip. They want the bleed time off the clock. They're playing Fnatic's game, really. They're not giving Fnatic any opportunity to get any free frags. Yeah, but Fnatic have decided JW, since he only has a pistol, why not just use him as a scout and see if he can figure out something in the middle? And he doesn't actually spot anyone in that bomb site, so he's just going to be falling back to middle, where he's definitely going to run into a couple of people here. Freiburg up on the high ground towards the B bomb site, seeing if he can pick up anybody running in. And again, Fnatic going for B here. Gerai doing a lot of damage in the middle, though, and that could lead to something, but there's nobody covering him. Yeah, and Fnatic just very thorough here, making sure that they smoke up everything, use the nades, stay alive. All of Meister just mowing them down as they come rushing through. Nip plummeting out of the heavens, and the last man alive, Get Right, cannot get a frag. So a perfect anti eco executed by Fnatic, and that was very clean work from them, keeping their cool and never really giving Nip the opportunity to drop them. Now we go to the crucial round. Nip with four rounds on the board in the 19th round, go for their first buy. And it's rifles, nades, no AWP. They're just going to be planning on landing all the shots with the uh, with the machine guns here. Now I said I, I don't think NIP is going to be able to make a comeback at 14-4. I think that's too much to ask. Of course it's possible, but they're going to have to convince me at least. I'm 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 remaining skeptical at this point here. Yeah, JW with that AWP, NIP have invested everything into this round probably be the most impressive comeback we've seen so far because it's in a grand finals as well if nip somehow could win 12 rounds in a row on this map that'd be that'd be insane uh well nip i don't think even know what the score is right now they're just thinking one round at a time one round at a time we play our game we focus we do exactly what we did in practice and we can make it work but it would certainly be one of the biggest comebacks in history fanatic now Looking to see if they can't get over into a position to take on A. The rotation, however, coming in from Nip already because they do have a man holding very close on short. And one who can apply the pressure from mid as well. So we have to see exactly how Nip managed to hold this. But the clock is ticking. There's only 45 seconds left now for Fnatic to make their decision. And it will be the A play. Pronax going for the molly at quad box. Exist is going to be rendered useless. He's caught in a corner. 
Nice opening kill from Olaf Meister. Flusher is going to follow up on that trend and get right goes down. Forrest in the back. He's trying to stay alive, trying to see if he can get some more kills in, but he's going to get dropped by Pronax. It's a team effort. Pronax picks up a quick double kill, and Freiburg in the middle is going to fall to Flusher's headshot. An effortless round from Fnatic. Great grenades, flashbang smokes, and everything, and they really do have this on lockdown. So far, it feels like that NIP had better strats and better idea of how to play Cobblestone. And on this map, which NIP picked, it seems like Fnatic are just in the driver's seat. It's going to come down to this round. It's 15 to 4 map point here for Fnatic. Now, and Fnatic have been the driving force of this map the entire way through. They knew exactly how to counter Nip right from the start, play super passive, and never give Nip the entry. And going into the second half here, what are they doing? No, no rushes willy-nilly, etc. apart from the start. They actually just slow everything down and then go for a very clean execute. Something that Nip have sometimes a lot of trouble to deal with if they can't actually shut it down immediately. So Fnatic now one round away from taking it all. Look at Forrest just sneaking up in here. This is really cool. Flusher has no idea. He's going to be walking back, but he has no reason to check it. He realizes his teammate was just in the middle. So that's almost an execution coming out from Forrest there. Steals the AK and runs away. It's a pretty good round. That's the weakness of having two guys boosted up like this. But then we have to see exactly where Fnatic, if they're going to manage to make it out mid in one piece, and they do actually manage to overwhelm, well, nobody, because nobody is here from Nip. They collapse back to the sites, and they want to maintain the man advantage, Nip. They want to make Fnatic work for this, and Fnatic with the firepower looking for the frags, but they can't find anything quite yet. JW hoping someone's going to be forced back. I mean, if they just go peeking here, he's going to take one down. So Forrest, for all that he did, is still going to be dropped. Freiburg has the bomb dome over by the playground. He's still going to go down. Olaf Meister coming in from the vent room and taking him down. Fiflaren, flash goes in. JW point blank range with the AWP. Doesn't work out. And Fiflaren is going to go for a quick double. Very nicely done. And Crims is going to get the bomb down. And if he can clutch it here, no, he's actually going to wait. Again, he wants to go for a one-on-one -on -one instead of a one-on-two. Absolutely. It's a dangerous game he plays, though. And with 10 seconds left, he will get that plant. Now he has to find the man peeking. The man working his way out on Sky. That sets it up, and he reads it. Crims gets get right, but can't get the final frag. Exist will find him from the heavens. And now there is plenty of time for the defuse. He has a kit. It only takes five seconds, but that's more than enough. And Nip hold it off one more round. Fnatic sitting on 15, but Nip with five. That bomb plant for Fnatic means, I mean, even without it, they still have plenty of money. I think it was 11,000 on Pronex at the beginning of this round. So NIP have to win a, ho a number of consecutive rounds here before they can start to force Ecos. Ten in a row could be done, but you have to imagine, you have to calculate for the amount of pressure that's on NIP right now. Everybody realizes one single entry frag for Fnatic that could seal the deal. And that's exactly what they're going to be looking for here. Nip changing up a little bit how they're holding, but Fnatic not really giving them the opportunity. Once again, we could not have any aggression on the other side either. It's really just Nip spreading out. I think Flusher just saved himself. He threw a flashbang that's actually meant to counter get right if he's in a slightly different position in that bomb side. Mm -hmm. And Flusher flashed himself and then backed up. I think if he had kept pushing, he would have been he would have been picked off on get right. I think I mean, that was accidental, but it was kind of funny. Opportunity here for JW to strike. He's trying to click away the headshot on Forrest, but he's not going to manage it. Drops down to 32 HP, decides to try again, Crims. And Crims is going to take the fight. Forrest not finding the frag there either. Drops him down to 28. The door is politely closed, but it's going to be Flusha finding Get Right in the end on the other side of the map. Nice kill on the one guy who has an AWP, so... Flusher coming right back into it here. They are low on healthy. Flaren is not going to realize, and actually that may be a bit of a mistake here. They should have probably realized there was going to be someone pushing up here. Now it's a three on five, so Fnatic, they're inches away from doing this. Third map might be coming up. Forrest is snuck in. He's going to get the one kill. He didn't spot anyone, but there was someone there. So now Forrest is going to be trapped in here. Can he stay alive? AWP and Olaf Meister says no, sir. JW charges in. Freiburg trying to hold it. A really cool flashbang. Picks up the one kill. He needs a lot more, and he's not going to get it. It's Olaf Meister. Again, double kill, exist, one on two, 15 seconds as the bomb goes down. Oliver's gonna be dropped here, exist, trying to clutch it. And JW's on 12 HP, switches sides, trying to see if he can bait out exist here. And the Swedish captain waiting on the other side, seeing if he can get it done, ticking away. He has got the kid, he's creeping up slowly and JW's walking around the other side, firing a shot, he reels his position instantly. That bomb is far tick, but exist has the perfect angle for it. Very smart play, cold as ice, and it's going to be another round for NIP. 
Uh, the perfect haunting down there, but Fnatic, uh, they have so much cushion right now going into this. The damage that they have just inflicted to Nip's economy by killing off four members, we can see the effect that that has here. Nip still no bank on their side. They have to spend everything to re-equip once again. So Fnatic are are going to be very pleased with the outcome of that last round. It just, they just want to find themselves in these positions where they're going to be able to apply maximum pressure to Nip and make sure that Nip have so little room to work with here. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, it really does come down to uh, Nip not really caring. Just managing to find the frags, really. I mean, it's so close all the time. There's, this time was actually a double entry from Fnatic. They had a 5-1-3 and they ended up still not quite winning the round. So I mean, it was really close. And NIP has to be worried. If every round is down to a one-on-one -on -one clutch, that means probably before, uh, before the comeback happens, it's going to go the other way. Forrest almost gets the opening shot there. That's dangerous, leaving that door open like this. It's risky business, and Forrest crouches, puts his shot through the barrel. You can't shoot through those, unfortunately, for him. But he will try and put one through the door. I love how Crimson's is playing a bit of a swag yet again. The smoke is going to go down to block off Forrest. Forrest quickly changing his position. This could be a highly likely spot for him to get picked off. However, Olafmeister already trying to pre-fire around that angle. But there's yet to be a frag here. Nip already rotating in to shut this down. Exist strikes first. They fit far and exist. Lighting them up as they get onto this site. Olafmeister flanked by Fiflard. It's finally going to get one for Flusha, but not for long. Forrest finds him in the end, and Nip will collect their seventh round. Holy hell, Exist has been playing well in the last uh, three or four rounds, just picking up so many kills. He's up to 16, which is still some distance away from the scores that all of Meister, Flusher, and JW are dropping here, which are 22 and 21 kills each. Definitely very impressive, but he's trying to catch up right now. And um, Fiflaren also at 12, Forrest on 14. So NIP are slowly inching their way back. They need to win another eight rounds in a row. But at the very least, they have forced an eco on Fnatic. And they're actually going to be charging in. Forrest gets the one kill here. Some backup needs to come in quick. And he's actually going to get it as well. Freiburg, the buddy system, it works out once again. Oh, very well played, and that is going to be a perfect hold. Nearly for Florin getting dropped, but still keeping the important rifles alive here on Nip. They can afford to re-up, re-buy, as long as only one or two members gets caught. Now, what I would love is actually for, for a bit of wisdom and advice that Sean Gares gave us during the, uh, during the analysis, and that was, uh, that was an auto-sniper. Sean said, all right, if they get a rotating auto sniper, one that's really mobile, that can walk around everywhere, it can be devastating on a map like Cash. And NIP have the money for it. They don't need to save up money any longer. If they lose around, they lose the gate of the map here. Forest in the middle, like Crim's actually trying to see if he can pick up any more. Is he going to find the kill? They should be able to pick this up. If Flaren's really low on health hiding in the corner, he's going to get taken down by JW. A lot of confusion there. Yeah, perpetually flash, but that was great play. Forest, however, peeks forward and manages to pick off Olafmeister, brings it back to a four on four situation, and Nip managed to hold for now. But Fnatic, they've got control of mid. This opens up the avenues towards that A site, through the fence, towards the B site. And so now they have decisions to be made. Where exactly are they going to take this in the end? If they're really going to be trying to sell the fake to Nip. Try and make noise, go one way, and then juke left and go the other. It's an equal situation at the moment. Forrest creeping down. He actually made some noise jumping down, but he picks up that angle on Flusher. That's an unlikely shot to find. I actually think he was walking in there to try and pick up somebody in the vent. And um, Crims is going to see Getrine coming miles away. Very nicely done. So now we're straight back into a three on three. And we're at about 35 seconds. I think it's going to be a push to the A bomb side. The bomb's all the way over here in Forest. He can hear that door opening if it comes. But Crims is coming in from the other side. Can they stay focused here in IP? One mistake. And it's going to be all over. And that might be it. Forest goes down. Freiburg and Exist are left. And Exist will pick up the kill. Can he do it again? Can he save in IP for another round? He's going to go down leaving Freiburg to clutch it, and that's not a bad man to have left in this position. Exactly. They haven't quite spotted him out yet, but they are going to be able to get into after plan positions here, Fnatic, and this is going to make life very difficult here for Freiburg. He has two angles to check. As soon as he shows himself to one member of Fnatic, the other one is going to peek out and catch him in the back. But Freiburg looks, and as he turns away, Crims, with the perfect timing, collects the headshot. 16-8, the final score on cash for Fnatic, and this will go to map three, Anders. This will be settled on Inferno.
Absolutely fantastic. Well played, Fnatic, bringing him back here. That was definitely something else. And um, I think NIP, at the very least, managed to prove that they could get some rounds at the end. So they might have, you know, just saved their own sort of mental state just a tiny bit here. But it's still going to sting quite a bit. Yeah, this is this is what we saw from LDLC in the first match, in the semi-final match, right, with Nip. They never give up. They keep fighting. They keep getting rounds. And that just gives them confidence back going into that second map. It allows them, or into that third map, rather. But it's just basically them fighting their way back into the game, showing that they're capable of picking up frags and that Fnatic are not invulnerable. Yeah, but before we go to the third map, let's throw it over to the analyst desk where Scoots is uh, waiting. Take it away. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, again, do or die, we're down to our third map. It's, it's what you want in a grand final. You don't want either side to 2 0. You don't want them to be easy. Although, that was looking really, really easy for Fnatic in the beginning, right? They go up 11-4, but again, Nip in typical Nip style starts to make that slow comeback, but not quite, again, enough. Well, I did highlight it. Uh, you know, I hate to say I told you so. Yeah. I, did say, I, did, I did say before we went into that, like, I don't understand why Nip keep yeah. on, on picking cash. I think they've got, like, about a 50% win rate on it overall. Uh, I've seen them lose, and when they lose, it's typically a blowout. You know, they don't take a lot of rounds on it. Um, they've got this system uh, where they have get right picking up an orb, yeah. and it just doesn't seem to really work for them on, on the T side. So I, I really am confused why they uh, stick into this idea that, you know, Cash is a strong map for them, and, and Fnatic have the players that can, you know, win that map. Yeah, and I, I honestly think the map was decided probably in the first five rounds or so. You saw Nip win the pistol, they lost the eco. I think they may have won like a stress buy shortly after that. Yeah, it went to 2-2. Two, two. And then Fnatic quickly won, the, won back to reset Nip, and Nip's economy was like in shambles at that point. And Fnatic took an early lead on him, maybe like 5-2 or so. And then you saw Get Right use the AWP, like you said. And I've never been a fan of Get Right using the AWP, especially on T-side Cash. I feel like he's more of the lurker role on Cash. He lurks that B area, so when he's AWPing it, really puts a whole twist in the dynamic of Nip's terrorist side on D-Cash. Yeah. So uh, I hope they don't do anything like that going forward on Inferno. And I, I can't see them because, I mean, they've never done that before. But um, Obviously, we're talking about, you know, what uh, Nip have done wrong. I think it's fair we talk about what Fnatic did right. Yeah. So much that Crims might be get, having some nerves played out of his skin again. Uh, so talk a little bit about him, what you oh, noticed. Yeah. I think I think JW had a fantastic match. Um, there was a couple rounds where he was off in quad where he got like four kills or so, and uh, Nip really had no answer for his AWP. It was just rotating around the map, B, A, B, A. Like, they just had no answer. He was playing so aggressive, and NIP had no solutions throughout the whole half after, after their early failures. And I mean, it was just utter domination that first. Yeah, it was a really solid performance all around from Fnatic. Now it's anyone's game when we move into this third map. I, again, I don't know psychologically how that affects them because when you lose a map that you pick, and you know we know that Pronax is probably hurting yeah. from Cobble, well, now Nip have got to be hurting going into the decider, that a map that they're absolutely adamant they can win, and they lose like that. Yeah, especially when they just lost on Inferno against LDLC. Yeah. I mean, that was a very weird nip against LDLC on Inferno, though. I had never seen him miss that many shots before. So, yeah. um, that, I think, I, well, let's hope it's a different uh, story this yeah, time around, I, so it's a bit more I competitive. Think, I think their, stri their strategy in that match was, was sound. It was perfectly fine. They just weren't hitting shots early in that LDLC match. I think this match right here is going to be a totally different different story. They're going to start T-side too, which is a little bit different. They have time to, to sink in. Oh yeah, we've got the stats up now, which is great news. So you can see uh, straight away, I think Crims has been kind of, uh, he's changed teams. Maybe that's <laughs> the sign of things to come at a late transfer. Oh, what, uh, it's happened. They're going to give Nip uh, six well, guys. How do they and, lose? <laughs> and they lose. It's six on four and they still lose. <laughs> wow. Uh, Deranked. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, you're absolutely right to point out JW. His opening was absolutely key. I thought Crims was solid. You see Olaf was solid. It was just a great consistent performance across the board uh, from Fnatic. Forrest uh, and, and Exist were the, really the two that kind of stood out. Exist especially. He made a couple of 1v1 clutches. But ultimately, it was they didn't really get going on cash at all. Yeah, I think the looking at this scoreboard, the one difference you know from Cobble to Cash, look at Get Right. Goes from yeah. 32 frags to 11. Yeah. Um, NIP is really going to need Get Right to be at very least second on the scoreboard if they're looking to bring home this championship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I, again, I we, we start looking at Inferno. I've got no idea 
how this is going to go. I mean, I, again, I didn't want to call it. You said 2-1. Yeah. We're, we're lined up for that. Yeah. Uh, it could still happen. But, I mean, Fnatic are going to be feeling good going into this. As far as they were probably concerned going into cash, they were, they were done and dusted. Yeah. And, you know, this is like the last chance saloon for them. Yeah. I feel like NAP has notoriously had some troubles with Fnatic, particularly JW on Inferno. Yeah. He likes to play up in the halls with ops and stuff like that. And just It really throws Nip off their tempo, and I hope they have a solution for it so that way it doesn't get out of hand. Uh, I definitely see this coming down to the wire. Um, Are you sticking with your prediction? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to stick with my prediction. I'm going to go with NIP winning this map. Oh, dude. Don't back I out. Don't I, back. I, no, I, 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 I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I'm so glad I haven't got skins riding on this, man. That would suck. But no, I, I think, I, I, no, I think Nip is still just going to do it, but Man, this is just—it's just been a crazy final and a crazy tournament throughout, really. Yeah, and again, it, 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 like this is this is what you want to write. You want to yeah. write all the way to the final. And and again, we've we've discussed the new maps, and you know we had one in this series, but you know we are at, at, you know ending on a tried and true uh -huh. Counter Strike map in general, but certainly the the, the most popular map uh, in pro tournament play. You know, not dust to matchmaking here uh, yeah. on Inferno. So again, there will be no. No, it's a, it's a no really random bickering about yeah. they, they won on you know uh, a newer map. It's a really balanced map as well. I mean, yeah. it's, it's ideal to showcase the talents of both of these. Uh, yeah, I, we can't end on a better map. I mean, this is what everyone wants. They want to see one of the main maps. They want to see both teams at their at their top. And I think that's what we're going to get in this final map. It's like we planned it. Yeah. Yep. It's now, like we planned you know, it. Just so everyone knows, you know, this is our last little segment. You know, when, when <laughs> there doing? is the big fanfare and we do have a winner, they're not going to come back to us and analyze and everything. That's kind of that <laughs> Debbie Downer thing, right? So Red Eye and the gang at the stage will take care of it. So I wanted to give all of us an opportunity to kind of give our final thoughts and wrap up our desk. And starting with you, Sean, your final thoughts on the tournament. Um, and, well, and a little bit about, you know, what's up for Cloud9 next. I mean, a lot of people are giving Valve heat for the veto processes, the map pools and things like that. But what they need to realize is what Valve has done over the last year and a half. When we were playing CSGO, the players on this team right now in Cloud9, um, we were playing CSGO with 10,000 players a day. Um, right now we're at 200-something thousand, I believe was the update today. It's insane the progress that five devs for CSGO have made over the last year and a half. And I am truly grateful for what they've done for the game. It's really like a huge part in all of our, our lives as pro gamers. So um, props to Valve. Thank you for Cloud9 for sending us here. Thank you for Logitech for all of their support. And um, it's really been probably my favorite major so far. Uh, just for me, I got to say, you know, back in 2005, I shoutcasted my first ever game of Counter-Strike. Uh, it was on TeamSpeak. I had 80 people listening in the, in the channel. It was for a reloaded community cup for my pub server. And I always knew Counter-Strike could grow. It would be something like really special. I always believed it, but I never thought that by the time it did, I'd still be part of it. So to be part of this major, even in a small thing and everything that's been achieved, I, you know, I'm really humbled and, and, and honored. You know, I think the community has done a sterling effort. I think all the players have really raised their game as professionals. I think ESL have put on an absolutely fantastic major. And just this, this tournament for me has been, been the pinnacle of, of, of Counter-Strike. We've seen incredible series. And like I say, just honored to, to have been a part of it. Last in memory, these guys, no doubt, man. NA's back, baby. Uh, yeah. Great game, great series. You know, and for me, I echo a lot of the stuff. You know, again, not too much story time with Scoots, but it is just absolutely amazing to see our favorite game, certainly the one that got us into the world of esports for me, to have ascended to what it even was back in its first heyday. You know, we're setting record in game, we're setting records in Go TV, we're setting, setting spectator numbers on Twitch. I mean, it's blowing up. And every major, yeah. it's had a huge bump. And again, we're going to have more majors. This is not something that Valve is going to stop doing. Right. Obviously, the eSport cases are still dropping, so keep buying those keys. Um, they keep adding, they, first they did capsules, then they did the capsule stickers with the pick'em system. So again, they're going to keep adding all this fun stuff, which is great. And again, as an old guy, it's just, I'm honored, you know, to, that I get asked to do this kind of stuff. A lot of people could sit in this chair. Um, you know, I'm certainly not the best host. I'm not the best at all this <laughs> stuff. But uh, it, it just warms my heart that I can sit and kind of be part of this history, you know, um, uh, and, and that's really it. So, you know, big shout out to ESL. This is a different environment. Gamescom is not like being in a stadium, and, no. and there's lots of different challenges with that. Yeah. Um, sometimes people at home don't get that. They look at what's happened before and go, this is nothing like that. And it, 
it's the nature of this particular venue. Gamescom is the largest uh, gaming event on the planet, and it, there's nine halls around us. It's just it's a little more confining in what ESO wants to do, right? Yeah. So obviously we want our own stadium, we want big stuff, and I think as this keeps growing, you're going to see that it's not just Dota and League of Legends and StarCraft that are in their own stadiums, but we oh, hopefully eventually, hopefully you folks will travel and will start filling stadiums so that we have that badge of honor, not just these big numbers. I just hope you're young enough to appreciate it. Yeah, I just got to stay alive, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, so thank you guys. Obviously, Sean, thank you to all the pro players that helped us all weekend long. It's been amazing to hear these guys as the true analysts at this desk because that's insight that nobody else can give us. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Great as always. Always a pleasure, brother. You know, and again, on behalf of me, thank you everyone for tuning in. And again, now it's time. We're going to see the winning moment from Fnatic on that one and then the last map of the grand final with Anders and Semler. As soon as he shows himself to one member of Fnatic, the other one is going to peek out and catch him in the back. But Freiburg looks, and as he turns away, Crims, with the perfect timing, collects the headshot. 16-8, the final score on cash for Fnatic. And this will go to map three, Anders. This will be settled on Inferno. Oh, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen of the audience. It's our third map for the grand final. Can we make some noise? What a great game it's been already. Now we are ready to see how this is going to turn out on Inferno. This Look is at this. It. The major title, title championship is about to be settled on map three. It could not be better. It's a winter rematch, and Fnatic and Nip will clash in a moment's time. But we have to get hyped. We have to make noise. We have to let the whole venue know that this is happening. It's going down here. Make some noise. Third map hype here. We have Counter-Strike. We've opened up a whole new scene now to fit everyone in. So now we have double the audience here at Cologne. It's absolutely fantastic. I can't believe it. Nah, neither can I, man. This is absolutely amazing how many people have been tuning in to how the community has grown. But it's a thing of beauty that we have before us here, Anders. Fnatic clashing against Nip to settle everything here. Fnatic on the brink of picking up their second major title. This is the first time in history that a team would collect two major titles. Fnatic with, with Pronax at the helm could be the team to do it. They very well could. They were looking on point and ready for a map that wasn't one of the new maps with Cash, and um, that is definitely scary for NIP because the next map is one of the best well-known maps in the whole pool, Inferno. Probably one of the maps that, that teams end up playing the most at almost any tournament, especially before this major tournament. It was very popular in best of ones. So we'll have to see. If NIP can't figure out a way to change things up, there's probably a good chance that Pronax is going to know not everything, but uh, maybe a large enough part about what NIP are doing to take the victory. Oh, they've done it once. That's the thing. Fnatic, they've taken Nip out once to claim their first title. And if anybody knows Nip, it is Pronax. And we saw that clearly demonstrated on cash. Pronax has got Nip dialed in right now. Every decision made was one to cancel out whatever Nip were throwing at them. And it was very well done by Fnatic. So going into Inferno, it really is going to be focused on B-side, I think. And this is something that I got from Semphis outside as well. We discussed it during the break, but he really thinks that B-side is going to be everything here for Nip and for Fnatic. And we know who plays on Fnatic, or on B-side for Fnatic. It's uh, Olaf Meister and Krims, the two heaviest hitters on this team right now. So it's going to be one hell of a mountain for Nip to climb, but we should be loading into the map in a second's time. Yeah, well, actually, before we do that, we are just going to make sure we can get everything sorted out here on the stage. So we'll go to a really quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back, guys. So don't go anywhere. It's going to be the third map. Stay tuned.
Gaming-PCs und Notebooks mit neuester Hardware sofort nach Release gibt's bei One.de, der Nummer 1 für Gaming in Deutschland. Riesige Auswahl, perfekter Service und schnelle Lieferung. Kauf schlau und freu dich auf PCs, Notebooks, Tablets und Zubehör für noch mehr Spielspaß. Geh jetzt auf One.de und klick dich rein. One.de, your system, your choice. member of Fnatic, the other one is going to peek out and catch him in the back, but Freiburg looks, and as he turns away, Crims with a perfect timing, collects the headshot, 16-8, the final score on cash for Fnatic, and this will go to map three, Anders, this will be settled on Inferno. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost ready with the third map here, the grand final of the ESL 1 Cologne 2014 tournament at the Gamescom Festival. Has been such an incredible best of three already. Starting out on Cobblestone, then on Cash, and uh, obviously scoreline so far is 1-1. Going into Inferno, I really don't know, Sam. I, I do favor Fnatic on this map. Maybe not a lot, but just a little bit. I do as well, actually. I think this is going to be Nip fighting against Fnatic to take this title, and it's only fitting that they do so as well. Fnatic are the championship holders already, have won to their name. They are now one map away from securing their second title. For the first time in CSGO history, this would occur. So Nip have one hell of a task ahead of them, but let's go ahead and actually take a look at the lineups here. Nip, in case you're just tuning into the stream, in case you don't know who Ninjas in Pajamas are, they are the best team in CSGO history. And the, trans the, the way that they got through these playoffs here, taking out Cloud9, the, the North American hope, that ma they managed to have so many strong performances throughout this entire tournament, throughout the group phase, and even in the quarterfinal match versus Nip. Nip had to earn that match, Anders. That was one of the most exciting best of threes we've had all tournament long. Yeah, and then that turned into uh, a, an even, almost even closer best of three with LDLC, who have been looking incredibly good whole tournament, and they just barely made it through. NIP, of course, Exist, Forest, Get Right, Freiburg, and Vflare, and they almost need no introduction. Um, not just in global offensive, but going back a very long time in Counter-Strike history, these have been well-known faces. Um, yeah, that's Two, just I mean, one of these. You have legends on this team. Exist with the unbeaten streak at DreamHack, practically not uh, no longer, but still, uh, he they have such strong performers on all this team. This is why this team was so feared throughout the entire history of CS:GO. They dominated 87 and 0 on LAN. They were unbeatable. Now the Fnatic lineup, on the other hand, is an interesting one as well because they seem to keep on Fnatic, and this is actually something that we did talk about, or it has been been uh, sort of said from Khan, who's obviously a legend himself, that part of the philosophy of in this Fnatic lineup is keeping a core group of players and then adding new things when it doesn't work. And the new additions here are Crims and Olaf Meister, and that was definitely no mistake on Fnatic's part. They have been playing the best tournament of their whole lives here. GAW, Flusher, and Pronax is the rest of that core, and. Mm -hmm. This mix of players works really well together, and they've only been together for a really short time. You have to be really scared if you're an opponent and you're thinking about what's going to be happening for the next couple of major tournaments. If this Fnatic lineup stays together and plays like this, it's going to be terrifying. All right, well now, ladies and gentlemen, we've kept you waiting long enough. I think it's time to settle things. It's, it's now time to settle the title, but we're going to get in-game for the pistol round here between Fnatic and Nip. One thing to note is that Fnatic are starting on the CT side. Nip will be starting on the T side. But one thing to actually go back on real quick about this lineup, Olaf Meister and Crims come from LGB, a team that have always given Nip a run for their money. Fnatic, the core, took Nip out in the finals of DreamHack Winter. This team is designed, practically, to, to eliminate the ninjas from any tournament they face them in. And we shall see if they're capable of here on this last map of this Grand Finals, going into it now, whether Fnatic can seal the deal. 
Uh, to me, it feels like you know, NIP, they must have been so high coming over that win on Cobblestone. And then they must have been, and obviously Fnatic coming out of that one feeling really low. Then we go on to Cash and it's sort of a reverse. So it feels to me like the sort of net sum of positive and negative emotion is about the same. But there's a real difference because Fnatic, they are still riding that high wave a little bit. And whereas NIP, you know, they end at different levels even though it might be the same overall. And that's a really big difference here, which might mean that the pissed round is going to make a huge difference here for both teams. If if NIP win it, they might be right back on an even keel, but if an addict do it, they could pick up on that early momentum and sort of keep going. So we'll have to see how it's all going to turn out. Now, NIP are a team that can bounce back from this situation. Just yesterday, they lost Nuke against Cloud9. They come back and take it decisively versus LDLC. They are a team that are capable of resetting. After that short break that they have between maps, they eliminate the rest of the series. They look at this as a best of one. They say, we have this one map. It's time to get the job done. It's right here, right now. Nothing has happened in the past. It's all about this map going into the future. And Nip, we are now eight seconds away. The countdown has begun to end this warm-up, and we will be getting into the pistol round here to settle it all. Fnatic on the CT side, Nip on the T side. But let's make some noise, everybody, because this is the grand finals of the second major of the year here at Gamescom. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the show, and let's see how this is going to unfold. One team is going to be able to win $100,000 out of the total $250,000 prize pool. And um, Fnatic have already done it once. We'll see if they can defend the title here and get it happening. Forsha, sorry, for all of my story in the middle, but it's a firing squad for NIP, and Fnatic are coming out on top. Four is the only one returning a kill in the middle of all that chaos. Get right, we fly on four is still left. JW trying to make a run for it. They actually don't do any damage to him. That's pretty impressive. He makes it out in one piece, and that's not what was supposed to happen. You could clearly tell both of these teams, they wanted to hit the ground running right here in the pistol, catch the other team off guard. But Fnatic coming out ahead means that Nip have to reset once again, slow the pace, and look to see if Fnatic are, go are going to give them the opportunity to get an entry frag to get onto one of these sites. Bit of a dangerous game here for Get Right to play. Normally Glock versus P2000 or USPS is a really, really hard battle to win unless you hit an instant headshot. Flusher coming in, Get Right is looking for it with the pistol and they're trying to wrap around through Archway here and he's going to kick up the kill on Flusher. Crim's now in library and this is a back into a three on three. Still 40 seconds for NIP to make a move. Crim's rotating back and forth so much and Get Right comes up with an insane headshot, jumping in. That has opened up the map completely. He's gonna take matter into his own hands here and see if he can get it done. Can he find a third one? JW trying to rotate back, but he's trapped right now. He's out of the B bomb site. And if he tries to get back in, get right, might pick him off. He's gonna go for it here. The bomb will be planted. JW, the only one defending, and what a sick headshot. Takes down Forrest, and it is a 2 1 2. The 2 1 2 retake situation. Now it's all about Fnatic keeping their cool, but you have two heavy hitters rolling in. Ulfmeister only with 16 HP, but lethal just the same. And speaking of lethal, Hello, get right. Takes out JW, and now it is the two-on-one. Olafmeister has to roll into the crossfire. Flashes out CT, uses the molly to clear one half, but we have a man waiting on the site. It is Florin, who's going to keep him off the bomb, and the, the molly actually backfires. Olafmeister forced out into the open, and get right with the quad kill in their terrorist pistol round. Very nicely done. That, that Molotov, Oli almost jumped into it. He, he just so, was so focused on that bomb. Get it right. Four kills in a piss around. That's heartbreaking. Olafmeister actually mollied himself away from the bomb. He had no way of getting onto it because it actually dinked off an, an edge there and came right back at him. That's heartbreaking. Fnatic have to recover here in this second round, but they are on Inferno, they are on CT, and they are absolutely capable. Yeah, really good grenades from NIP, but an even better shot with the C-Set takes down Exist, and they also have the two scouts, and now a Galil picked up as well, so Fnatic scavenging whatever weapons they can, and this scout buy has been working out. I would say this is a really strange map to go for scouts on, but it's the grand finals of a major tournament. If you're going to pull out something utterly insane, now is probably the time to do it. Yeah, exactly right. And Pronax, not often that we see him use the scout, but JW could very well take some faces off with the gun. So we, Nip have to be very careful here about how they approach this site. They still have a couple nades to work with. Get right, going with the double flash and a smoke. So they could be able to set up a play here. And it does seem like Nip are going to be sneaking through, gathering up and looking to get onto that site as quickly as possible. Just overwhelm the defense in a brutal rush. 
JW down here, scout in hand, misses the shot, point blank range, and actually all of Mice will pick up another kill. CZ75, get right, trying to adjust with the P90, and JW, can he actually find a kill here? It's Flusher who comes in with the stolen Galil, leaving get right alone in a one on three. Nice play from Fnatic as he said on all of my stuff, picking up a huge double kill, and that's really the major deal right now. Get right trapped, still gonna pick up the one kill here. 20 seconds left, he's gonna go for the bomb, but he gets taken down. Triple from Flusher, and NIP gets slain by Fnatic. You, know, you see how hype Flusher is as well. Hashtag just Flusher things. We have to start that again because he's clearly shown up and dominated in this second round. That's turned everything around now. Nip lose all of the momentum that they had after that pistol. And it's now Fnatic with the reins in hand. Flusher with just, I mean, a dominant performance on that side. Rolls in, instantly gets two kills. And that's the Nip push done. It doesn't even matter that JW wasn't landing shots. Flusher was there to save the day. Now we go into the third round here and Nip will be forced to eco. Now, an uncomfortable throwback to what happened on Cash, as Sean Gares was pointing out, that map was maybe even decided in the first couple of rounds when they kept going back and forth, and if NIP are going to be thrown into the same pattern on, on Inferno, that could be really scary. Of course, you're on the terrorist side, you only have to win about five or six rounds, and you're going to be all right, but right now they're at one, and Fnatic, they do have a, a very, very solid uh, CT side hold. All three members here as well. Crims with that lethal swag seven right around the corner. He's going to be looking for a shot, but the smoke goes down. That's going to block him off. And our nip actually going to go for a fanatic plant. Guess what? They know how to stop it. Exist just barely fails to get the shot. Olaf Meister will kill the planter, but the bomb is down. And that's the whole point of this play. I love that Nip are actually using Fnatic's own strategy against them. Yeah, that's got to sting a little bit, right? Crims is actually going to get the kill finally with that one, and it's going to be JW with the final one, but you are right. The main idea here is just to get the bomb down, get the $800 bonus for everyone on the team. That's how the economy works for any new visitors out here. Even if you lose the round, you still get the bonus, and that is going to be right into the fourth round, as NIP will have enough money to force it up if they wanted to, and they must know Fernandez's economy is not exactly looking great, so they could actually go for it, but right now they're debating it, and there it is. And that's, that's very much an Exist thing. Exist, he's, he's a man who looks at their money, he's like, we have 32, 3300, buy. Just buy. Go for it. Keep the pressure going. They will not let up. They cannot let Fnatic start to develop a bank. That is the crucial point here for Nip. They need to make sure that they keep the pressure up on Fnatic, keep them spending money round after round, so that if Nip win a round, there's a high risk that Fnatic are going to be forced to eco, and that's when Nip will get all the rounds that they need in this half. It, the, Nip really only need five rounds. Their CT side is very solid, so they only really need five rounds on this T side to think to start thinking that this is a successful Look performance. Look at this, get right. Doesn't wait for the smoke, just charges in, but it's not enough. JW and Flush have picked up a sick kill, Second one from Flusher, and it's a two on four. Four is very low on health here. That was a very explosive round from NIP, but Flusher manages it mid-air. JW picks up that shot with the AWP, and NIP just get destroyed running in here. And that was actually looking so good. I love that move from Get Right. He realized that once the flashbang was up, the next thing coming up in that sequence was going to be a smoke, so he just charges through it while the rifle isn't even out yet. And that should have actually been the perfect opening, so I love that. And you know what? That force up from NIP, somewhere out there in the audience, Semphis is watching and enjoying that they keep buying like this, because that's something that Cloud9 did all throughout this tournament. Yeah, it's a taste of their own medicine sort of thing going on right now. Nip are going to be the ones to force to eco here. And because Fnatic have held so very well, they have plenty of money going into it. But once again, really a lot having to do with Flusher there. You know, the individual performance from Flusher is just ridiculous. I think he's at 6-1-2. and two, And that is just a brutal scoreline to have so early on on your CT half. But now we have to see if this rush is going to be able to work here from Nip. They, once again, the smoke goes down. And are they going to try and change it up? The crossfire is already established here by Fnatic. And they are just looking to shut them down. And Exist changes up the position of the plant. It's such smart play. Yeah, again, holding it is something you can't do. In fact, they're not going to get a single kill. But the bomb plant happens. And if this keeps going up here, Fnatic got to be careful because NIP could end up getting a lot more buy rounds in this first half than they normally would. And who knows if that's going to be enough. But the positive thing for Fnatic is they keep winning rounds where they don't actually really lose anyone. 
Flusher, nine, one and two right now. Top fragging. Pronax hasn't picked up a single kill, but then neither has Freiburg. It is still really early in the first half. But NIP, in fact, and this is a slightly worrying trend, it's only Get Right who's really done anything. Seven, and then everyone else has one except for Freiburg. Yeah, Freiburg actually having a zero, two, and five start, and that is definitely not what you want to be seeing. I mean, Freiburg is the entry fragger for Nip. He's the man who gets up into Banana, who starts getting the frags and start forcing the rotations out of enemy teams. If he isn't filling that role right now, Nip will struggle. So we need to see Freiburg step up his game, but we are already seeing Nip going with the buy here, and Forrest does have the AWP. JW also. But JW, really one of those offers that we can look to to have a strong performance on Inferno. He, is, he has shown time and time again that he will get the frags on this map. Exist looking over the smoke. Very common boost now. Everyone knows this. Be surprised if Crimson is going to get caught off guard by it. He should be able to pre-fire, at least just avoid getting killed from this position. Been so used, and he's actually not even going to peek it, so that's another way to deal with it. Grims is alone over here, and Fnatic going for a very standard uh, play, which is leaving one guy in Banana and four people at the A-bomb side, something we've seen all over the place. Geraint is going to flash over here, and actually, are they going to try and pick Crims off? Oh, that is a very clever flash. That is a very clever play there by Nip. Just overwhelming all aggression straight into Banana, and there's Freiburg taking point, taking the charge, trying to spray through. If Crims was on the other side of that, he would have been a very sad customer right now, but he wisely backs off to the side. Olaf Meister is there to support him now as well. The two XLGB members working so well together to lock down that site. They've done it time and time again, and we have to see if Nip will ever be able to crack that defense, but for now, Nip, they have to move over to the A side and start looking for a frag. JW somehow missing a very clear shot there. And Forrest also missing. I have no idea how that happened. Forrest goes over to library and JW is going to take him down. And Forrest actually had no backup then. That was a little bit strange. Pronax with a good double kill and time is also running out here for NIP. Exist and Freiburg should just be running away and try and save these rifles if they can. But Fnatic are hunting them and they definitely should. They have so much money to work with that um, they don't even care any longer. Freiburg gets the one kill and is going to be staying alive. That was pretty close. That was crucial, in fact. There's one thing. Before we even got to Cologne, I had this prediction. I'm going to try and share it with you, because if it ends up being true, it'll, it'll be fun. There is a trick that we saw Sipnix from Team Dignitas do on this map, and it's at the bottom of Inferno. You can boost up in a very cheeky spot down by the arches down there, and I haven't seen that for such a long time that I bet one of these two teams will have forgot it, and the other one is going to try and do it. Um, so I'm, I predict that that's going to happen, and we'll have to find out if it's ever going to be used. Seven rounds in, it's a 5-1 lead here for a Fnatic, and they start off really well here on the final map. Yeah, and now they're actually starting to push down a little bit. Uh, the original nades there, thrown by Nip to try and hold them back. Olafmeister will find the shot on Exist. Freiburg does return, picks off Pronax. He's still here, though, and he's going for more. Two big frags. The third man is here, however, and Freiburg has to back off. But Freiburg somehow opens it up single-handedly. All three frags, but the bomb is on the other side. Yeah, but that could be all right. Fnatic are making a huge rotation. Freiburg, all he has to do is stay alive, and it's going to be great. Oh, he picks up a quad kill. He could do even better than staying alive. He gets the kill. Now, is it going to be an ace with five HP? That's what's on the plate right now for Freiburg. JW, on the other hand, has quite a different menu to chew through here. He's got a one on three with an AWP. He's guessed the right bomb site, but the bomb goes down. So now he not only has to kill three members of NIP, he also has to defuse the bomb. And I'm wondering if it isn't smarter at this point, trying to find a way out, but from the depths. Dun, Freiburg, dun, dun, like dun, a hungry dun, dun. shark, just inching his way forward here. He wants that ace, and that would be absolutely brutal. Fnatic, that could really rock them. Freiburg comes in, he sprays, Freiburg misses, and it's the ace! He picks it up single-handedly! Ruins Fnatic! What a play! And this could be a turning point, Nip. That has got to be shattering for Fnatic, and they bounce back from being manhandled by Freiburg. And the master of banana certainly is here. Only him walking forward and getting all three frags to open up that site. But the mind games from Nip, forcing JW out into the open with as safe a plan as they could manage. Just so very well done. Fnatic, however, plenty of money to buy up in this round. They will have all the gear necessary to hold off the push. And they're actually changing it up as well. And I do like this. JW is missing some shots here that he shouldn't be right now. And it hasn't, it hasn't actually cost Fnatic yet. But if he keeps doing it, it could really come back to haunt them. So normally not the style that we see from him, but he's also been playing a lot more passively than we've seen so than we normally see from him. No crazy apartments push, no push up into the window room. Um, and that could be a switch up that Fnatic can do if they need to. 
Now, this is something that we've been seeing from Nib quite a bit. Two men in Banana. And usually it's been, you know, Freiburg solo, but Exist is there to support him. Fnatic happen to be changing up how they're holding as well, however. So it seems like that ace might have rattled them a little bit. No aggression down Banana this time around. Only the two guys holding very passively. And now Fnatic realize, okay, we need to be careful. We need to be playing passively, patiently, making sure that we don't give Nip the entry. We can't let them get any momentum now. And Flusha peeks out and does just that, gives it away. Yeah, a little bit too soon for JW. Really good grenade out here, actually does just a little bit of damage. And he misses another one here. JW, it's time to connect. He can't keep doing this. Third strike's coming up. All of Meister battling it out and will take down Forrest. And JW still hasn't got the kill here towards CT spawn. He's going to go for it with the C set 75 instead. And he's actually going to pick up the kill on Fee Flaren inside the B bomb sign. Exist takes down Crims. And it is a three on three, but I think Fnatic have the advantage right now. Bomb only just going down. They're already at the bomb sign and they have the health advantage too. They certainly have the health advantage and get right just caught with his knife out but Freiburg strikes right back with 8 HP picks up one frag and turns this into a two on two JW he knows that he's gonna need the bullets reload and Pronex and JW now have to move in together and just overwhelm this so very quickly. The smoke gonna go down to cut the man off from Flowers. Spray going through, but it's not gonna do anything. Existent Ninja, aptly named, he's standing his ground. He gets one frag, turns it into a 1v1. JW running out of time. Does he have it? He does not. There is no time for the defuse. And Nip will take the third round on the board. Now, right from a, from a really good hook onto Fnatic, an ace from Freiburg into a failed defuse with a few seconds left. These are two really, really devastating rounds. Fortunately, Fnatic can still buy, so they have one more chance to recover and see if they can catch their breath here. If they get the next round, I bet Fnatic are going to stabilize instantly. But if they lose it, NIP could equalize this score back into a 5-5 situation. That would be a, a massive impact on this, uh, on this first half. That would be brutal. Oh, that would be such a turnaround. If Fnatic actually get knocked out, they are out of money, Anders. This round is so important for Fnatic, but they lose a man yet again, and we know what happens when, for when Nip get the entry. They become an unstoppable force. Will Fnatic be able to weather the storm? We're about to find out now. They saved the AWP, so Flusha, or Olofmeister rather, will be picking that up. Makes sense. And we have to see if he can find an opportunity to pick up a frag and bring it back to a 4-on-4 four -four situation here. Olofmeister scoped up in the middle, and he's definitely very good. He doesn't hit the shot. I don't know what's going on. Fnatic are usually so on point with this AWP, and last time it did cost them. That was, uh, that was JW missing a number of important kills. They, they got to start hitting those shots. They can't let Nip get away scot-free like that, not when it's a freebie. And Nip, 40 seconds left. Still time on this clock, still needs as well to work with. Olaf Meister peaks, and he picks it up. Forrest trying to work the angle there, trying to draw them out. There's still a man alive, however, that's Get Right, but this is Get Right on a mission. Sneaky Snake on the grass. And he is going to be looking, but Olofmeister turns away at the last second. Oh, for what the smoke! What Exist, are you joking? Gonna be taking down Crims, that leaves Flusher alone. Is it gonna happen again? Olofmeister guessing through there, not connecting, but Flusher will. That bomb still not down. Ten seconds, nine seconds. They're gonna have to go for the plant, and Flusher can't guess the angle right this time. It's a three on three. Fnatic last time, the retake didn't work this time. They're feeling more solid. Get right coming up from behind, but he's also alone in a one on two. Throws out another grenade here, gets up another kill. Is it happening again? Pronax is alone. That bomb is in the middle of nowhere. He's gonna have to sit down in the open. He goes down! Get right clutches it, it happens again! Oh my god, get right! He does it! That's a third round in a row, and that might be the last strike that Fnatic have. Three rounds running, Semla. Three rounds, and they've burned their bank. Fnatic are now on the back foot. Fnatic are now the ones reeling. Some of those punches have connected Anders and Nip. They're not going to stop swinging. This is when they go barreling forward. They want to make sure that Fnatic cannot recover in this half. Fnatic going for the Swag 7 on Olaf Meister, the shoddy in hand. That will get him $900 a kill. We'll have to see if he can find any here. And he is pushing up fairly aggressively. Is there going to be a man around the corner? Yes, there is. Lands a tag on Get Right, drops him down to half health, but he will make it out alive. I love the idea from Olaf Meister. Instead of letting Nip gain confidence and, you know, assert control of the map, he decides the right when we're about to go down, we'll, we'll try and take a swing back. If you got that kill on Get Right, that would have been immense. But this right now, what we're witnessing right here, feels like a throwback to the NIP of early 2013, where they had an 87 and 0 LAN record. This type of play that we just saw from Get Right, that is that's classic right here. And if 
if that's what they're going to pull up in the grand finals, Fnatic have got to step up their A game. Nothing has been decided yet, but it's a 5 4 scoreline. Could be 4 5 5. Now, this boost here is not the one that I was talking about, so I can't take credit yet. This is a very common one, and I'd be surprised if NIP don't see this. Yeah, when there's one man, they're going to be standing right on top of each other, though. So it could be uh, at least one frag there going Fnatic's way, but it seems like Nip wants to set up elsewhere. JW sprays through the smoke and manages to catch Exist on the edge of it, but he does not make it out alive. Get right will shut him down. Two members remaining on this A site. Flusher about to get smoked off. Takes a lot of damage to the face. Nip wrapping around onto this site, taking their time. But Olfmeister is waiting around the corner. And there's the first track. Goes for the jumping shot, but he's not getting it. He is getting overwhelmed until he finally lands the shot. And this is now the push coming to a halt. Eight seconds left on this clock. But it's not going to matter. Five, four, do they get the plant? They do. Last second, they pick it up, and Flusher so close here, but he only has a pistol with 12 bullets in it to kill two people, and he's gonna go for it. Picks up the one, and Get Right takes him down with a triple kill. My god, that was close. Fnatic just one bullet away from upsetting NIP, and that would have been the perfect comeback. That was also a very, very solid eco round from Fnatic, dealing massive damage to Nip's economy, killing three, four members in the end, just lethal. And now they bring it back to a five on five and have the money for a buy. Olaf Meister will be the one with the AWP. It's not going to be on JW, but Fnatic, they have this capability. They can change things up, and they're doing just that. Yeah, Look at this, this is that push. aggressive apartments push that I was talking about earlier. This is exactly what Fnatic can do if they feel like it. And so far, NIP are aware of the situation, but it doesn't matter. Olaf Meister actually taking a little bit of time to do that, getting the job done right, and JW. They might be the ninjas, but he's got some swag to him as well. It's going to be taken down through Flarin, and that's the bomb drop as well. What a great comeback from Fnatic. This is tactical brilliance. It is complete and utter change of pace. I'm sure Nip are expecting Fnatic to play safe, play careful, look, the, uh, try to hold the angles. Instead, Fnatic come rushing at him, full on swinging. Nip just trying to overwhelm the site, and they do manage to pick off Flusha. But there's 57 seconds left on this clock, and the bomb is on the other side of the map. Get right is going to be the man we're looking for here, but Fnatic at this point cannot peek. They cannot give any opportunity here to Nip to get another frag. JW even just going to smoke it off and make absolutely sure that Get Right can't use that way in. Freiburg still waiting over here, and maybe Pronax going to get caught walking back. Almost Freiburg looking for the headshot. Pronax kind of trapped behind this truck, but if Freiburg just stays here, I think Pronax should almost be fine with it because they must realize the bomb is still in control. Yeah, they, they still know where the bomb is, so Pronax just waiting. That's smart play. NIP basically ran to the end zone and didn't bring the bomb, so no touchdown so far. JW there is going to take down Exist, so they're really doing a fine job this round. JW, a fantastic double kill and controlling the bomb the whole round here. Get right comes charging in, can't even pick up the kill. That's a fantastic triple. JW single-handedly winning this round. Masterful play. The combination punch, Olaf Meister with the op onto the man on bridge, and JW with the sneak, giving Get right a taste. Now they know exactly what's happening here. Fnatic bounce right back into this game. Six rounds on the board, money to buy. And Nip are now the ones whose economy has been shredded. They are down to pistols in this round. A single smoke and a single flash. And I'm curious if they're going to go for the play yet again, Anders. We're about to find out if it's going to happen or not. They already used a smoke, I think. So that's just a flash left. So just a bit of a... I don't want to say coincidental buy, but they want to make sure they don't get picked off by Olomaster too soon in that mid. It's going to be the pop flash out through A and then just YOLO off the balcony straight onto that site, see if they can't get that plant. There are currently only one member, there's only one guy on this side of the site right now, so they could potentially get out here if that man doesn't hit his spray, but instead, Nip. We look. How are they going to time it? There it is. The, tr the, ru the, tr the rush begins and Olfmeister gets the first shot on Piflarin. He actually lets the first guy go by and kills the second one. There's so much control in what Olof Meister is doing. It's not for nothing that Sean Gares nominated him as one of the most up-and-coming players in Europe. He picks up another kill here, and he's going to get help from his teammate quick. And they just deal with that round fine. But the, the immense control, and with the amount of pressure that's on everyone right here, holding that control and, and being so cool is, is a really rare talent. It's something you cannot learn. It's just something you are. Exactly. Ice in your veins. I mean, Flusha has demonstrated it time and time again. Olaf Meister as well. Fl I mean, Fnatic right now, if they fall back on the tactics, they get back on route with the plan. You can be sure that Pronax has it all under control right now, and Devil Walk is looking over their shoulder, making sure that they are communicating that they've got everything right. But Olaf Meister takes yet another shot down mid, and he is not going to connect. An opportunity missed, but then lines it up through the smoke on Freiburg, gets a great pick, and now Fnatic 
they have the advantage on this site, although Nip are not wasting any time at all. No, really pushing aggressively here. Flusher, though, in the pit. Gonna pick up the bomb carrier. Forest with a good return on to Olaf Meister. They gotta get rid of Flusher really quick or smoke him off here. One or the other. Deal with him or ignore him. It's just basically what they need to do. Get right is gonna be taken down prone action. It's a three on three. Bomb goes down. But this is a weird situation. Get right, this might be everything here. Is it gonna happen again? He's waiting on the corner. AK in hand, he sprays down one and very nearly gets Crims as well. And that bomb is already ticking, but they have kits. Fry few flower in here. How could he possibly save this round? This box you could shoot right through and Flusher knows it. Triple kill. And the round has to go to Flusher here. Staying alive and getting the kills. Exactly. Nip did their best to ignore him as long as possible. But facing him towards the end there really gave Flusher the opportunity to step up to the tax. Despite Getright's best efforts trying to draw the attention or over to Quad, rather. That is um, a very, I mean, just a very solid hold from Fnatic, dealing with the early aggression from Nip with the fast push up short as well. So Nip really trying to throw a loop on Fnatic, trying to catch them off guard. Fnatic, even down a man on the A defense, handle it with ease. Now, what did work well for NIP is that they got the bomb plant down. They also killed a number of people, so Fnatic's economy is still very low. And NIP actually make a force buy based off that information. They realize if we win one more round here, we could bounce ourselves all the way up to 7-8 for the first half, and that would be a big uh, achievement. Already five rounds, I think it's going to be enough for NIP to be able to make a comeback here. But JW instantly takes down Forrest, and Forrest unfortunately cut away from his teammates. Now, they go for the boost again, but... Fnatic just uh, too aggressive here. At this point, I almost wonder why Nip are rebuying here in this sort of situation, right? Because if they have five rounds on the board, that's already that's already solid. Like they can do work with five if they pick up the pistol in the second half, right? Why not eco one round and make sure that you have full equipment going into the last round to give yourself the best chance uh, at picking up nine six instead of that ten five finish. Uh, that's a judgment call, isn't it? And it's really shown exists. He's he's willing to do this all the time and. Well, they've made it to Grand Finals, so something is working. And for JW, it's working too. He took down another player right for the smoke. He exists on 26 points of health right now. And uh, he's going to go down. That's Crims picking up that kill. And the bomb is dropped as well. They must have spotted it right there. So now Fnatic are in complete control of the round. And NIP are going to have enough to buy some Galils, I think. But they might even go for pistol armor instead of grenades. Garite is going to be taking down uh, JW, leaving for Farron alone. One on four here with 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Decides to go Galil. He's just going to flash in and see if he can't get in here fairly quickly. Now Olaf Meister is holding around the angle. The smoke is going to go down to block him off. And JW, I mean Crims, rather, he really has no HP right now. But there's only eight seconds left, and Fnatic will wrap through. Olaf Meister, with perfect timing, gets the flank on Fiflarin, wanting to make absolutely sure that Fiflarin couldn't go for some kind of crazy plant and get it off there for Nip. But now we can see the effect that this has had. Nip going into this 15th round, it's around 30, you know, 3,000, 3,300. That really isn't enough, even for a Galil buy, really. I mean, Get Right's gonna go, Get Right is gonna go AK and just straight Kevlar, not even a helmet to deal with those M4s. Yeah, Galil on Fiflaren without any armor, which is really dangerous here. Flusher in the middle, they keep switching up this AWP, and this is obviously because Flusher had the spawn for the middle, so normally it'd be on probably all of Meisters, we see them switching out guns here, but nice work from Fnatic, very really simple stuff as well, but if you get the right spawn for the middle, you might as well be the one picking up the AWP. What are they going to be doing here? They have four Molotovs on NIP side, so they can definitely uh, crisp some Fnatic players if they get the right uh, Molotovs in. And especially in the pit where Flusher was holding earlier, Molotovs can do a lot of damage. Yeah, we like fire, don't we, Anders? A little bit, right? This is perfect. Double smoke going in, and we can see it here. They want to completely smoke Flusher out of that pit and deal with him later. We can see the Molly's raining in as well. They're just going to coat the entire site. Molly's just raining in, and there we go. Flusher will be forced around the angle. The Flash doing quite a bit of damage. And Florin drops down and gets the instant headshot. But Pronax, he's still alive out in the open, holding short. And as they come rushing through, he's going to go for the spray. He gets one, and he's still alive. Two for Pronax. And this is crumbling. Nip getting stuck in the pit. Now, uh, Vifleren picking up one more get right. Can they do this? It's a two on three. They have time here to take this fight, but JW is going to take a kill. He's been so good so far. Get right. Can he stand up to JW? He can. He finds the headshot. Is it going to happen again? Get right and Frigo has so many great rounds, and get right especially has been clutching in massively here on the first half. Crims is alone in the one on two. The bomb has been planted. Now he does have a kit, but this is the 15th round. 9 6 is a very different taste for NIP than 10 5 is, and Crims has no grenades he's sneaking in he realizes he's gonna have to go they're not peeking they're not giving this one up easily crims inching forward at the moment and he's gonna get spotted already now they know exactly where he is 
Get right, hiding, just letting him get distracted. Crims with a jumping shot, he's gonna go straight for it. Exist stops it once now, just timing two, three, and Exist will take the round. Very, very well done for NIP. The smokes down to Pit, and then the entry with the Molotovs. And Fuflaren with the opening pick down on Flusher, that was so huge, and he picked up a second one. I think actually this round is mostly credited to Fuflaren. You know, setting up with those Molotovs to clear Flusher out. The Flash as well, doing quite a bit of damage to him, but when it comes down to it, it was Pronax and it was Fiflarin. Fiflarin with two and Pronax with two from that site. Pronax really slowing down Nip. But when it gets down to the end of that round, Exist and Get Right played it perfectly, setting up the crossfire, making it impossible for Crims really to get in there. He takes out one man, but then in that 1v1, Exist plays it perfectly. So going into this second half here, 9-6 at the end of this half, that's actually very scary for Fnatic. I'm sure they would have... They expected going into this having an 11-4 finish nearly. I'm, that is the scoreline that Fnatic were looking for because they want to have a dominant lead going into the second half. If they land a pistol, they want to close it out fast before Nip can get rolling. Forest, get right. They're all forces of nature on Inferno and Fnatic are going to have to deal with them now. Fnatic do look a little bit displeased at the moment. And I think you're right because actually 9-6 is not that unmanageable for Fnatic. But if you're expecting 11-4, it is slightly different. That's the thing. So um, I think it's their expectations working against them right now. The thing is, there was a version of Fnatic where, and there was a Pronax in the lead and everything, where they had so many incredible T side strats on Inferno. And for the longest time, they've just not used them. We saw NIP, and you pointed this out somewhere in the game, we saw NIP using them when they smoke out the front of the B bomb site, and also the one smoking off the front of the A bomb site, where you plant, actually not with the default plant, but the one that's a little bit further up, smokes toward pit. All of this is classic Fnatic stuff. And if they can bring this home and make it work as effectively as, as it did at one point, they are a very strong team on the terrorist side. Oh yes, they are. Pronax is the man who will spend hours just setting up smokes, figuring everything out, visualizing how it's going to go for his team when it comes to crunch time, when it gets into the game. But now is the best time for Fnatic to show us something new. Pronax, let's see what he's got in his magical bag of tricks. As the, the countdown begins, three seconds and we're into it. Fnatic on the T side now. Nip on the CT side. And we have to see whether Nip can hold going for a very classic hold, in fact. Yeah, nothing tricky here. NIP don't want to risk it. They realized they had a really good first half. They just need to play standard, seal the deal, and hope that Fnatic are not going to be up to the task here. Very slow pace, in fact, from Fnatic, really taking their time, hoping to see if Nip are going to be pushing aggressively anywhere to get information, or if they're going to try and gang up anywhere, really. So Fnatic hanging back, making sure that they can punish any kind of overextension coming out from Nip. But now is where we see these nades start to come into play. Pronax has a double flash and smoke available. I love this setup from NIP. Fnatic are going to have to land uh, some excellent grenades or some instant headshots to deal break this. Actually, now they fall back, which is a little bit of a shame. There's still uh, about a minute left on the clock here. Forrest picking up the C set in the pistol round, and he's going to be waiting here. They're going to come charging in. They've already spotted him. He charges out, and he's going to go down. All of Meister gets the opening. Fnatic, this round is huge for them if they can take it. Fuflaren falls next. Now Exist trying to recover, but it's not working. Fnatic with a perfect entry, and I think NIP swapped their positions exactly five seconds too early. At the, exactly, at the wrong time there. The nades largely ineffective for Fnatic as well. The flash, as we can see, not really stopping anybody, but in the end, really, Forrest not able to land his shots. Fiflarn exists, everybody getting overrun. It comes down to Get Right and Freiburg now in a two on four retake situation. They go rushing up onto the site. Sees head in hand. Get Right, Get Right gets one kill. They each do, in fact, but it's not going to be enough. Flusha and Pronax live to save the day, and Fnatic will have 10 rounds now on the board. The pistol is secure, and as we can see, the rifles as well. The question is what do Nib decide to do here? Is it going to be an armor buy? And it doesn't look like it. It looks like straight CZs apart from the shotgun on Get Right. And we know how lethal he can be with this shotty. Yeah, and Inferno is almost uh, the perfect map for the CZs and the, and the Mag 7. Because Fnatic, if an IP player right, have no chance but to get close at one point. I hope Fnatic are going to use as many grenades as they can to try and scare NIP from the most close positions. So that they can force them back in a bomb site and maybe get into a slightly better one. But if they just walk around corners without throwing any grenades or using any of the stuff they have, that's where everything turns. And this whole tournament has been very, very heavily influenced by the anti-eco rounds that have been lost. 
No, it's true. I mean, you, you, have, you have players that are terrified about going around corners because they know a CZ could be le lurking like this. Exist peaks. He doesn't get the opportunity right, though. Olafmeister backs off just in the nick of time to stay alive. And Exist will still be alive here on this side, trying to change up his position because at this point, he needs to try and make it sound like there are three guys, four guys on this side. Yeah, he's really trying to sell it here, but he's already made a little bit of noise and sneaking through the smoke, hiding in the corner. He's actually going to catch Flush A, but he's only got about 12 bullets more left here. Getting more kills is really difficult. They're wrapping around into the A-bomb side. Backup is coming from NIP, but once the bomb is down, the game changes here, and Fnatic will accomplish that much. They have time to get into good positions. They should be able to hold on to this round. The retake is real. If we can see it, they have a gun to work with. Now on Exist, that Galil could be a big problem. Get right still with the shotty. But there's a great lineup from Olafmeister. Instant headshot on Exist. That's a Galil drop. Olafmeister just cutting them down in droves. Freiburg is out of the picture. And we're into a four on three hold now for Fnatic. They just need to play patient. They need to stay on the site, hold the angles, and they are off on the hunt. Olafmeister just collecting frag after frag. Only 300 with that SMG, but still, that's 900 total he's got this round. Not bad. And a little bit of a shame that Forrest couldn't hold on to that Galil. I'm actually very confused about why NIP decided to stick around. I know they were probably looking for exit kills, and that's a really good pickup from Geray there, at least taking down all of Meister. But I think a Galil in this round, instead of the pistol he's gonna have, that would have made a big difference. It would have had an impact, that's for sure. Right now, though, the question is, Nip, you know, they just need to try and get more damage done to Fnatic. They need to make sure that Fnatic are spending money. And it's not getting completely out of control here for Fnatic, but they aren't wasting any time either, Fnatic. They don't mind actually going up to full nades, getting everybody equipped with rifles, so that in the next round, the round to come, when Nip have the rifles, Fnatic will be prepared. This is the calm before the storm right now. Once Fnatic, once the NIP pick up those rifles, a lot of this uh, Grand Finals is going to be decided. Fnatic, Ready to go into that B bomb site. Molotov, and this is what I'm talking about. They're making sure that NIP have to move back so they can't hide on those really, really good corners where pistols can be used. So I'm absolutely loving the way Fnatic are playing these anti eco rounds. So this is actually something they've been very good at doing all tournament long. And a huge reason, I think, why they're in this finals to begin with. No, the, it has been great leadership. I mean, they went through their semifinals with a dominant performance, a 2-0 over a favorite to get into the finals, Team Dignitas. So Fnatic have earned it, and they are showing us why here live now. And we shall see. Forrest gets the drop on the man, manages to get around that corner. Perfect timing from him to pick off JW. The rest of Fnatic come rushing up short, but they have to be careful. They, they have to be worried about walking into a corner here where Forrest may be lurking. Yeah. He's still got a lot of 12 bullets left. He's gonna pick up a kill. That's actually Fu Farron helping out. Fnatic are walking into it. Forrest, they're gonna do it. It was the calm before the storm, and Forrest is a hurricane of death. He picks up a triple kill and gets an 11-7 scoreline for NIP. What an upset! That is the eco round that could actually turn everything Nip's way. The money for Fnatic is everywhere. They will force up, they will go for the buy because they have to. They can't let Nip run away with this. They need to make sure that they keep Nip as far away as possible with the rounds because as soon as Nip started getting some momentum, this could get very difficult for Fnatic. Full buy on Nip's side. Thanks for the kills and thanks for the bonus money. And we shall see how they decide to deal with Fnatic who have bought two rifles and three CZs. Complete brilliance. Fnatic walked into that bomb site expecting to have the proper range to deal with it and they almost did it. And Forrest put down his foot and stopped them. That crossfire set up by the man on, on the site proper and Forrest as well, just brutal to walk into there as Fnatic. You're going to get torn to shreds. Yeah. Nip now, Nip now just playing this very safely. They know that Fnatic are hard pressed right now. They know that Fnatic are under pressure and that they need to find entry frags to make their lives easier getting onto these sites. But Fnatic, they, they're peaking these angles, hoping to catch somebody from Nip off guard, and that's just not the case. Nip are perfectly content right now to play passively and let Fnatic come to them. They're making sure that Fnatic know exactly how it feels to be on the receiving end of this. I do, I do like the fact that Fnatic have done this, though. They realize that if, you know, again, if you both buy the ticket, you can't win the lottery, so they have two AKs in the mix here to try and see if they can do it, and some pistols to follow up with an armor as well. Not opening happening here. Fu Flaren's gonna take down one, and Forrest will pick it up. Great grenade coming out here from Pronax. Will do some more damage. NIP are very soft enough, but Geroin, doesn't matter how little HP he's got, he's gonna pick up a triple kill, a double kill actually, sorry, and Flusher will go down after the one. So a fairly successful round for Fnatic, but nowhere near enough. Double for Geroin, double for Forrest, and now Fnatic are gonna eco. They have no choice. And this is, I mean, NIP's economy is already not looking that bad, and now it's going to start really building up. 11 to 8 
Three rounds is nothing at this point. Three rounds is very easy for Nip to get a hold of. This is a, a very balanced map, but it's it slightly goes CT side, which is why we say we need at least five rounds on the T side at the end of the first half, because in the in that T side you can run it all, or in your CT side rather you can run it all the way back, and we're seeing that now from Nip since that eco round. They're closing the gap. Three rounds is nothing. And Fnatic realize it. Fnatic spending a very small amount of money in this round, in fact. Only $300 picked up. And that's on Flusha with that CZ. And they actually... Flusha has about 2,750 left still. So I wish, I really wish he would have gone for a smoke and a flash or anything mm. like that. Putting, in, putting a bomb down in the bomb site right now would be so good for Fnatic. NIP won a bunch of rounds in the first half because they could actually buy more than they should have been able to. They got so many eco round plants, and Fnatic right now needs to do exactly the same thing. But they're not giving themselves much of an opportunity with just pistols. Grenades are the key to getting into a bomb site. Grenades do certainly make life easier. Flashes, smokes, and it's what I expect to see from Fnatic as well, seeing as how they've come up with so many tricky plays in the past, managing to get smokes down, go for the plant in the smoke, being unpredictable. That is definitely Pronax's way. But right now they're just gathering up, and it seems like they want to zerg down this side as quickly as possible, but the crossfire is set up. Get right finds the first frag on Flusha, and Freiburg will calmly click away a second one there. There will be no plant here for Fnatic this round. 20 seconds left on the clock. The man alive, JW, not for long, as Exist rotates in from CT. And Olaf Meister, who's patiently been waiting this entire time, hoping perhaps to catch somebody on the rotation, will walk away empty-handed. He walks right into Forest, and actually, actually, I spoke too soon. Olaf Meister gets a fantastic kill. And gets to save the AK. What a cheeky round, and that's probably going to have Forest be a little bit annoyed here. He's going to survive the round as well. No! What? Oh, I spoke exactly a half a second too soon. <laughs> and that has a huge impact on the round now. Olaf Meister, that AK would have been worth its weight in gold. And as a result, instead, he's going to have a C set 75. He died after the time ran out, so he does not get the win bonus. That's how the econ economy system works if you're on the terrorist side. That is a, a big blow to Fnatic. That's, I mean, that is brutal, especially when you think you survived the storm that is Forest, only to get gunned down by Fiflar, and now Fnatic. They do still manage to get full nades on Olaf Meister, so he can contribute. And with a CZ, we know just how dangerous he is, but Fnatic are not going to be pleased about that. They've already put it out of their minds right now. They're just trying to set up to see, get the map control. They've got control of A apartments. They've got control of lower banana, at least, really just trying to put shots through and see if they can do any damage to the man holding on the other side. Right now, the top fragger in this game is Get Right with 24 kills. Very closely followed by Olaf Meister at 23, who's actually been leading the uh, the scoreboard the whole game through. But now Get Right is he's been waking up on a whole new level. This is basically the Get Right redemption that we're seeing here. Flusher is going to be putting a grenade through the smoke, not connecting with anyone, and the time is running out here for Fnatic. 40 seconds left, then they were shaping up to make it a, a B, an A push, but I think they might actually change their minds here. They could decide to fake it. I mean, it really depends. The smoke is going to clear and JW is going to push through. Freiburg is holding, though, but they're really trying to sell this right now, Fnatic. They're using so many nades towards this A site, and now they've managed to pick off Freiburg, who was holding alone on that B site. The bomb should get planted here for Fnatic as they try and make their way across to that bomb site. Get right madly spraying through, and he does massive damage. But then Olafmeister, peekaboo, catches him off guard. And Fnatic in a terrific position now. Yeah, it should be an almost unwinnable round for NIP here. Exist is caught in a really weird position, and the bomb has already been planted. Olaf does go down, so it's a two on three. A Fnatic, they gotta hold on to this. This this could be deciding the whole grand finals. If they lose this Fnatic after having such a great start, such a great entry, I'm not sure they can mentally recover. Forest is gonna take down Flush and out, so two on two. Can they hold on to it? This still far take. Exist warning in. Finding Pronax in the corner, but Pronax survives. Fantastic play. Forrest comes in to try and do it, but Pronax just staying safe, and that's going to be the end. Crims with a double. Great play from Fnatic. The opening and then the patient play afterwards. Fantastic work. You can see how cool they are. Still calm and collected. They lose everybody, but this is not a problem for them. They got the round, and that's what's important. They get Nip to spend a lot of money re-equipping, and now they have a real chance going into this. If they pick up this next round, Fnatic are going to shatter Nip's, Nip's economy, and they're going to be right on the doorstep but of it, that 15th round. But because they lost everyone themselves last round, it works both ways. This is the difference between NIP making it 11-12 or Fnatic making it 14-9, and it starts with a kill from Get Right, and a second one to follow with us. 
Prims goes down and they fall back to safety, which is exactly what you need to do. Five on three and Fnatic now, they got to win this. Mm, Fnatic now, they have no room for error. And Nip have to play exactly the way they're playing right now, in fact, not peak. Do not peek. Do not give any information away to Fnatic. Do not give them the opportunity to get an entry frag or a refrag or any kind of kill at all. It has to be very calm here on Nip's side. They wait because Fnatic are under pressure right now. Fnatic, the time is bleeding off of this clock. They've still got plenty of it at 55 seconds. But eventually, as they fail to find the kills, the pressure is going to mount for Fnatic and they're going to be forced into a very uh, difficult position. Exist is waiting around that corner. He is peeking the angle. He does not manage to spot Pronax, however. They are three on three in this bomb site, but if they lose just a single person, the backup's gonna come in here. They need to move swiftly. They, they need to kill an IP in a matter of seconds and get the bomb down. That's what's on the menu here. Pronax looking for the opening for Flaren staying alive. 25 seconds and as exist and Forest and now Flusher alone. And this is gonna be an eco. If Flaren jumps and hits a perfect headshot, and that is it. 12 to 10, very, very lightly gonna be 12 11 here as Fnatic don't have the money. They actually have so little money, they might even have to double eco unless they wanna have to go for Galil's. Exactly, double exactly. The pressure now mounts for Fnatic yet again. This is just such a back and forth match, Anders. We couldn't wish for anything better than this to settle the title here at Gamescom 2014, the second major of the year. To refresh everybody here, if you're just tuning in, Fnatic are the first team to have won a major in CSGO history. Nip have made the finals of every major to this point. But today could be the day that Nip finally break the streak and pick up their first title. It's what they've been wanting since DreamHack. That's what they've been hunting for. And getting revenge on Fnatic, that has to be high on their plate as well, high on the menu. Forest shooting down through, and there's even a Molotov here. They already deal pretty well, and the, the thing is, for Fnatic's point of view, anti-ecos work much better on the CT side than they do on the terrorist side. C set 75 can still be good, but Fnatic can't even invest into it. They have to go 100% eco here. Yeah. JW the only one with firepower, really, but Nip are not giving him any options yet again, playing very passively from back on the side. This is about as passive as you can get. A good pop flash there exists, not finding the opportunity to get the frags, however, leaves his mate, but they should be falling back. Florin is hungry, he wants the eco frags, and he's gonna get one at least. Pronax will hunt him down, however, punish him in the end, and Forrest gets caught by JW. Yeah, good, re good return there from Exist, instantly picking it up. And a really, really nice detail from uh, from NIP over by what we sometimes call Little Pit, that corner they were fighting at. As the forward NIP player actually ducks so that Reflaren can shoot from behind, in that kind of pressure situation, it takes only one misstep and you get a team kill instead of a kill on an enemy. And that's not something you can afford here. Those mistakes cost you the game. Freiburg with an instant headshot and it is going to be 11 to 12. Two kills for Fnatic is actually pretty good with just Glocks. So they're going to be all right, happy about that. But now comes the question, do they force or do they... Yeah, and this is what they do instead. They're going to go for some grenades. Which they great. All of them that enough for an armor. So he's just going to be, you know, evening out his money here. Fnatic have to go for basically double eco. They do, and that, but that takes real sang froid on Pronax's side. Because to, to decide, to actively decide, we are going to give them another round. When you know that Nip, they're getting the momentum, they're starting to get the bank behind them, and they're on the CT side, but you're still going to give them another round. That is a huge decision by Pronax to oh. make all oh, flush out with the team kill on. That's minus 3,300. That team kill can mean everything for Fnatic. The upcoming buy can be so handicapped now. Now that's a real problem. I mean, that is a real problem. That's about worst case scenario now, as we can see on the scoreboard. Flusher down to zero dollars. And again, it's almost as bad as the case with Olaf Meister. He's just not going to have any money going into this next round. Pronax, he's, he, Pronax is right now in his mind is going over what they're going to do with five members who are fully equipped. And once again, in a crucial round, he's going to be four members with rifles and only one with full nades. This AK from Flusher, I mean, actually, I, I really wish they'd give this AK to Olaf Meister because he has the armor for it. They're going to go for a B push here, as we can tell, but can they make it through with just one Rifle. If they can, that turns the whole game around. If they get the timing right here, Exist is working his way into an angle, but there are three smokes on Fnatic right now. They can cut off coils, they can cut off CT, they can cut off practically everywhere here and really funnel down the defense on this side. But Get Right is alive behind new boxes, already spotted instantly. Good spray through the smoke by Exist, though, and Get Right stands his ground. Not going to live, though. All of Meister with that CZ guns him down, and we're into a two on three retake situation now for Nip. Ten seconds left on this clock, though. Fnatic desperately need this plant, and they will manage it. Flusha. 
throws down that bomb, gives his team the extra 800, and that is crucial for Fnatic going forward. Very, very important, especially for uh, Flusher, who's very low on, uh, on money here. Forrest gonna pick up the kill on Flusher and Olaf Meyer still alone, one on three, and they're gonna come in, come in from every angle. So they retake the bomb side, no big surprise. But that bomb plant was very good. Fnatic, they're making the absolute most out of what these situations. And there's actually gonna be 3,500 on Flusher. Now that's plus the $800 bonus he had. Without it, he would have been down to 2,700, and it would have been a very, very different situation. So 12 12, it is tied here in the grand finals for the final map. Ladies and gentlemen, this is as close as it gets. This is a thing of beauty in JW now. This is what Pronax has in mind. Going for the Ecos like this allows him to go for the expensive rifles. He has that sniper rifle now, and JW is a terror on Inferno with just this weapon. But this is actually going to change up the strategy for Fnatic now, because in the end, Olofmeister is rushing up into the apartments. He's going to go for a very fast flash around the corner. Forrest is not going to be able to spot that in time. Turns away, gets flashed, but Crims has now worked his way in as well. Fnatic just throwing their weight around so aggressively on this map to get map control away from Nip, to put the pressure on the defense. It has to happen eventually. It just has to happen for Fnatic. They need an opening to get back in here. It's so close. If NIP are forced to eco at any point during the remaining five rounds here. That could be Fnatic's victory right there. And JW is going to be taking point. This is where, once they have the map control, they rely on him then to open things up for them. And with that op, with that op and with how quick he is, his reactions lightning fast, Fnatic are going to be counting on him to open things up. And if Exist continues to peak that angle like he's been doing nearly every round, this could be big. JW now going to work his way around Exist. He's on the angle. There's the shot, but JW misses it. A crucial shot, and he does not manage to land. That has been happening a little bit too often. Smokes out. JW misses again. Now is the time. He's already had two strikes. He needs to land it right here. Flashbangs in from Olof Meister. They're gonna go for a crunch on the B-bomb side. They're swapping it up. Olof Meister just a distraction. Pronex with a great opening. Olof goes down, and now the distraction is gone, but inside the B-bomb side, that's where it really matters, and it is none other than Freiburg holding it. He's gotta come up big with at least one and preferably two kills here. From the back of side, peeks out and flushes, crushes him. There's gonna be eight seconds left. The bomb will go down here. Now it's a four on the... It was three on three, sorry. It was a four on three. Oh, and that was a crucial play there by Fiflarovin now actually taking out JW. That gives control of Banana to Nip. That means they can split up this side if they so wish it. Krims is spotting a man out. That is Fifth Lauren from Coils. And they close in now like Sharks. Nip just, I mean, Nip, if they can find a frag very quickly here, they will go for this. Fnatic are on the same side of the bomb side. There's no crossfire. They're just, they're, they're, they're just being shut down here. Krims is going to be shot now. Flush around Pronex. Great kills coming in. Exist alone, and there's almost no time left. He's going to fake it once, but they have it. Fnatic, they find the round, and it's Flusher picking up a triple and Pronex with a double. Great round from Fnatic. That post pump position looked like it was going to cost them the round. They were all on the same side of the bomb site. If NIP had managed to line them up, that would have been horrendous. And they just barely hold in the end. You're right. That flank potential not panning out for Nip and Exist running out of bullets at the end. He came so close to getting the final frag, but at that point, the bomb had ticked down so far that he would have never been able to get the defuse. So Fnatic, when they go for the big buy, they make it work for them. They are now on 13 rounds, three more rounds, and they secure the victory here and their second title. This would be the first time in CSGO history that a team could potentially pick up two major titles. Oh, but Fiflaren, are you joking? He's gonna pick up a triple kill, goes for the USP, not gonna get the quad, but they do it! Fnatic, they have no money left. NIP take the round, and that's gonna be 13-13. Gamescom, we've hit over 400,000 viewers right now consecutively, make some noise! The most viewers for any CS event in the history of the game. This is a momentous moment, and we are having a most fitting game to celebrate. Now, 13-13, Fnatic, only pistols, no money left on their side, and Nip, once again, the opportunity to get on the brink of match point. And Fnatic, the pressure has to be monstrous on their shoulders right now. Pronax, only man with the P250, but they have yet again not invested much at all into this round. 1,100 value on that team, and they're looking to just YOLO out onto the site right away. Forrest waits around the angle, but he's going to be able to drop back to a, de to a decent position, actually, right back at the pit, and this is perfect. This is exactly where he needs to be to cut them off and catch them as they drop from the sky.
Yeah, and Exist is there to help out Forrest with a really great kill. And it's going to be a third one right there. Flusher alone. 14-13 is coming as Fnatic lose every single member. And it's going to be exactly what happens. Semler, if they had pushed a little bit sooner, a little bit later, anything. There were so many positions where Forrest could have instantly got picked off. But they chose exactly the wrong moment. He just got himself into the right position. Exactly. Just in time and danced around the pillars, stayed alive and did his job. But now it's, a, it's crunch time. It's do or die time for Fnatic. 13 rounds and they've just put the buy together. Three Galils, limited nades, head armor on only three members. And Freiburg, he's hungry. He's going to go ahead and start a barbecue down on Banana. Flusha is cut off from his teammates. Freiburg steps forward and gets the first. And get right will actually get a volley frag. They kill each other, except that get right got it with the Molotov. That's, that's an interesting turn of events. But from Greinberg is really the one healthier. 16 uh, is what he has. And four on four, this is actually a great opening from Fnatic. Much better than they have the last couple of rounds. Can they drive it all the way home? It's in this position, it's the T side with the advantage if they can bring it to even numbers. But Forrest takes a peek, does a little bit of damage, goes for the flash, and this could be big, big opportunity, but he's not gonna get anything. He decides to wrap around and try and cut them off before they can make it into CT spawn. And Forrest does it. Headshot on Prodex to slow things down. And Freiburg, brilliant position! Massive damage dealt! And Exist is still in the back side. Olaf Meister's gonna try and find him. They got to get this kill, but Exist retaliates. The NIP captain stands tall, and now they're gonna get the last kill as well. 15 13. And NIP match and map point. They might finally take a major. Second at Dreamhack, second in Katowice, and now at Gamescom in Cologne. They might finally have a chance. One round away, and Fnatic are spending everything they can to get equipped in this round. Crims will take the hit and drop the AK for Olafmeister, who will be the only fully equipped man on Fnatic. But now is the time. Do Fnatic manage to run this back, or do Nip secure the title? All of the decision, everything has to come from Pronax at this point. Smokes and flashes everywhere, but they are getting control of A Apartments, Fnatic. Taking what little they can. They have been smoked off from the bottom of a banana. Once again, Nip going with this strategy, but Nip are patient. They lie in wait. They've waited practically a year for this moment. Will they secure it right here, right now, in this round? Get right, currently has 28 kills. He's two away from another 30 bomb here in the tournament. And we are just uh, rounding the minute on the timer here. As Fnatic make their way around. They have one AK and nothing but pistols. What you've witnessed in this tournament is a broken NIP team managing to re resurrect themselves and Exist picks up two kills. Forrest with the shot as well. Olaf Meister goes down and here it comes. Two on five. JW and Flusher. There is nothing they can do any longer. NIP have won Gamescom 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, 16-13. It finally happens. After nearly a year, after nearly a year, Two second place finishes, Nip finally claimed the title! They are the champions! Gamescom 2014! And despite Fnatic's best efforts, it goes the distance, it goes all three maps, and we have our champions, the best team in the world, Ninjas in Pajamas!
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the champions of ESL One Cologne 2014. Let's hear it for Ninjas in Pajamas! And that is just about it from 2014's Cologne ESL One Championship. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for coming down to Gamescom. And thanks to all of the production that went into this behind the scenes, Daniel and the crew, to all of the commentators and all the players that helped us out over the weekend as well. And big props to our sponsors, BenQ and to Mad Cats. Hopefully we'll have another major very shortly. But from now, that is it from Gamescom 2014. Your champions once more are Ninjas in Pajamas!